Okay, hello there, great people who are interested in me answering your comments. So I thought this would be the best way to do it because I do not have the time to type out everything I want to type out when I read your comments because they are very, very, very awesome. <laughs> and I'm, they were, I, because, you know, I, I read all of them already. I forgot some of them, but I chose to forget some of them because I, I, I started thinking about stuff and then I was like, yeah, better do it in a live answer. Um, I do think that YouTube comments, like if I answer your comments, I do not give you uh, the full attention. Um, and even if I do give, give you the full attention, I cannot say everything I want to say. So I choose this method sometimes to address comments, ideas and everything. So today we will do the comments for, um, I hope I have the time, for uh, Three Body Problems episode 1 and 2. And uh, I will discuss some stuff here and answer your comments. So I will go through all of them that are here um, yet, uh, uh, already, <laughs> sorry, English. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's about um, 12 p.m fourth of april so that's where i read this so if you put down your comments after that i might not read it if you really want me to answer um consider um like messaging me on discord or patreon like not the the paid version of patreon like you can i think you can be a free free member and then you can also message me i think don't don't call me that but on discord you can also pm me um so uh, don't don't hesitate to do that the discord is always linked in the um at least in the video descriptions. I do not know if I will put it in this description, but uh, we'll see. Um, I hope you can see the uh, comments I put up here. Um, I will just read them out loud, so perhaps a bit quickly, but uh, so you know what I'm talking about. And uh, we will just start. I will uh, give all of you a thumbs up, of course, because I think every comment is valuable. I have not, I have not had a comment that was not valuable. So, I mean, that's uh, that's the thing. So, okay. So first uh, uh, we have, uh, so I will not read out your names. The names are on the screen. So shout outs to all of you who did comment. Thank you so much for the support. And uh, yeah, so uh, I don't like the first episode mainly just because of getting seen, uh, 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 probably the starting scene, I think. It sacrifices clear historical truth in order to uphold the so uh, scientism narrative. Communists were Marxists. There's no reason for them to be shocked or horrified to hear someone deny the existence of God. They were themselves atheists. For God's sake, they were themselves atheists. They were, as far as I know. But the thing is also with... Uh, so... My communist knowledge background is solely based on the Solzhenitsyn's Archipel Gulag. That's my main source of information. So everything else is like very rough knowledge. So I have to preface it, preface it with that. So if like I might not get stuff and I might not know stuff. So but from the Gulag Ar Archipel, uh, I did, do know that they went after the scientists. Um, and they were um, putting forth stupid reasons to do that because scientists could have been people who get in the way of the power structure of the government because communism is basically like the idea is um, I have to admit I do like the idea but the problem is corrupt people get will get to the top pretty quickly and they will fuck it up like that's the thing like humanity will get in the way of this uh, idea and uh, the people that go into those positions they are probably most of the times, at least in history, as far as I know, as far as I know, they were pretty like power drunk and stuff and they didn't want to give away their power. So scientists are intelligent people in most cases, so you better get away with those. So yes, it was not. Um, so, so this 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 uh, scientism thing, it's a pretense. Like it's a pretense to say that you are not, not godly. Like that's a pretense. Like they wanted to get rid of people that could be a danger to them. So that's how I know it. But then again, yeah. Um, I would love for you to continue watching the series. The outlook and wealth of knowledge and science politics make watching this series so much more enjoyable. I'm glad <laughs> it does, Paris. Um, I'm, I'm I'm very glad it does. So I do my best to give you commentary that is of value. Sometimes I ramble. Like, that's the risk of, of my style, doing commentary. Like, I do reactions in this way all the time. Like, I pause, I think about stuff. Sometimes I do personal anecdotes. Sometimes I tell you what I read. Sometimes I tell you what I know. But I try to give you some additional content. Because I don't know. With reactions, you know, I like watching some reactions. And I thought about what reactions I like to watch. And it's those where people think about stuff. 
And I don't care when people like go just, oh, and, ooh, like that's cool. Like sometimes it's cool to watch, but I don't want to do that. Like I, I think I also do that, but I think it shouldn't be all there is to a reaction. But I mean, that's personal preference. So if you like that, I'm glad. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm so glad you see, uh, see you checking this out. Yes, I am as well. Like, I just watched episode, episode 3. It was such... Man, episode 3 was so fucking good. It was so good. I loved it so much. I loved the video. I hope you keep watching. I am. I am keeping watching. Yeah. Um, thank God you reacted to this amazing novels adaptation. Some comments there. Uh, I'm definitely eager to jump into the novels. The concept was so interesting. However, I really struggle with the modern day characters. I agree. Um, especially Jake Rooney. I disagree now. Like, I did not like Jake Rooney in episode one. I really thought he was a piece of shit. But in episode two and three, I really, I think I understood his character. And uh, he was a brilliant character and acted to a, like, brilliantly acted. Oh, holy shit. Jake Rooney, one of my favorites currently. Like, um, like, like I think I've, I, I don't know if... Uh, Episode 3 is probably out, so you saw it, but I, I, I did think that Jake Rooney is a character. I would hate to be friends with him. I think he's a piece of shit, like, person, but character writing-wise, he's awesome. I love that. Couldn't stand him. Yeah, I couldn't stand him either, but he was so well-written. Can't understand wanting the characters to be cold, maybe a little detached because of the line of work, but I felt my eyes rolling to the back of my head every time he was on screen. Yes, the coldness is... I think the the actor sold that. It started in episode two. Like, the, the scene where I I felt I got him was the scene in episode two where he, um, where he uh, reacted to the cancer, um, the, the, the revelation that... Um, What's his face? The the, the, the the many worlds dude, I'm just going to call him that. He had cancer, he told him that, and he was like, Jake, the, the reaction Jake had that was so fucking well acted. Holy shit, man. Characters are very different in the book. There is no Oxford Five in the books. Yeah, that sounds a bit American, I have to admit. To also say that characters aren't necessarily better, but they are very different. Good to hear. These modern characters are substitute for some in the books and are really well characterized at times. Sometimes lived hundreds of years apart. The show currently chose to make the Oxford Five Center of Sprawling Epic. It will help the TV audience go. Yes, I agree. Uh, they had the problem with Foundation, I felt. And in Foundation, they also uh, uh, um, resolved that brilliantly. Like in Foundation, the Emperor's story is the best thing by far. Like the, um, what's, what's the name? The planet they're on that's like the savior planet that's so rubbish where they where they keep uh, the records of history like foundation adaptation i like i did a reaction to it and there were parts where it was like jesus freaking christ the characters are dumb as shit like like badly written dumb as shit like not like in story verse dumb as shit like holy hell but the emperor stuff was on point there as well and i feel sometimes it is necessarily if you have to condense time periods um you have to uh, make like to take creative license to make it work and i think they're doing a good job i i get every character i think i slowly understand all of them there are characters i really dislike because and there are tropes i dislike for example i dislike augie's trope with uh, soul i don't like that because it's very very by the book and i don't like that uh, it like you know my, my 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 thing is with stories by the book stuff doesn't have to be bad but you have to have this little spark this little twist on it and there i didn't feel it yet perhaps it comes up uh oh well yeah after you watch the show you should give the books a chance i will probably read the books or i will listen to them on uh on audible because i currently i currently watch the warhammer 40k uh, uh books of um um eisenhorn uh, they're very cool so I, every day, almost every day, do a three hours or two hours walk with my daughters in the little, whatever you call it, carriage, child carriage, the thing with the lion, and I, like, cut them around. And I listen to Audible. And currently I'm going through Warm 40k. Um, but I, I might, if, if there's an audiobook of this, I will listen to that. So, yeah. Enjoy it a lot. Please react to the full season. I will, definitely. Like, that's also, like, the show is so fucking good. I can't believe it. It's really good. Like... As a show, like, I'm sure the books are better. I don't deny I Almost all the time when I read the books after watching a show, the books were so fucking much better. Like, unbelievable. Like, Wheel of Time, for example. I love the show, Wheel of Time. I read the books. Like, I, I, I'm reading the books on the channel currently. I mean, I stopped 
at book four currently because of so much stuff going on but i will continue so so i, so I watched season one wheel of time i read season one uh book one of wheel of time the book was so much better it was so good and the show was already good then i read on in the books and then i watched season two when it came out and i was so mad at season two that's the thing with books like if you read the book in almost all cases the books are better i've had it only once that it was different uh, I found the show wildly uneven, but its concepts were still interesting. Interested to hear your thoughts. My mom actually had to stop watching this five minutes in because it was giving a flashback of the purges and beatings in Cuba during the revolution. Hard stuff for sure. Yes, I can. It felt realistic. It, I, I can see that. And 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 like if you if your mom, I hope she's okay. If she gets flashback, it was very like it was good in the way that it depicted something that happens. And I think I did get it wrong because I don't know Chinese history and I, I hope I was clear about that in episode two at least, that it was like just what I heard and read. So I might have gotten stuff wrong, but the fact that your mother reacted to that scene like this, I do think it's, the, the scene did it right. Um, yeah. Uh, three body problem. I thought uh, if you will see it back when Frierens uh, whipped out the cosmic magic, black hole, maybe binary system magic. Ah, yeah, yeah, Platt. Yeah, I, I did <laughs> know. No, I, it was coincidental. Yeah, in the Frieren episode, uh, Frieren used a uh, magic where she conjured up a black hole in the binary star, binary star system to fight. And I did comment on that. But uh, yeah, it's like, it's just coincidence. Uh, this might be one of the best reactions to this great insight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad if you enjoy it. Like, I do not consider it a normal reaction. It's a react analysis. Like, I talk a lot and pause. And, you know, I... I I think if you watch it, you might get like taken out of the episode and out of the flow with the style of reaction I'm doing. I, I just want to add stuff. Like it's important for me to add stuff to something because otherwise, I think it's morally not that good to like just watch a show and show the like image somewhere and like just comment on it, uh, not very deeply. I, I I want to add something to it. That's that's my philosophy with reactions. I want to add something personal. Uh, perhaps knowledge, perhaps a story I had, because I think otherwise reactions are just cash grabs. So, um, yeah. The actual book is way better for people than enjoy science. The show removed too much. I, yeah, probably. Like, like I, I, I know. I, I, I don't know, like, but, but that's what I got from it. Like, it's always like that. I, I'm fine with that. I like, I really like in shows like this how the directors and um, the storyboarders come up with stuff to visualize things and they've done a good job. I still think the microwave background thing would have been better as microwave background, but that's like for me as a physicist, like for, for laymen I can, or, or people not that familiar with the topic, I can see why they did stuff and it's fine. Uh, if you just make a, sh a show for people who enjoy science, then you will have a problem ever getting a season two that as well. With a budget like this, they seriously have to hit a very broad market to justify it. As such, they had to bring it down to a more understandable level for general audience. It happens in all the dictation of this just slightly complex subject and or world. Yeah. And I get that. And I, I do think they are currently, like, episode three, they are doing a very good job. They're doing a good job. Um, I do have criticism sometimes of depictions of scientific concepts. But the problems in my mind are, it's never that what they show is wrong, um, but what they show is a bit away off from what the mathematics, for example, would say. So if you take it too literally, you have a problem. You have always to keep in mind that things you see in shows and stuff, it's metaphorical, all of it. Even if it looks real, it's metaphorical, you know, so... Yeah, keep going, it gets so much better. It does. I, I've like episode three, yeah. If you're a physicist, the book fits you better. Perhaps we'll see. <laughs> Love your insights. Yes, thanks. I'm I'm glad you do like them. Uh you are the perfect audience for the show. Please keep posting your reactions. Yeah, I will. Don't worry, I will. Uh yeah, I will react to the whole season. Um I was hoping to find a, a physicist to react to this because it is a very physics heavy show. Yeah. But again, keep in mind I, I am a quantum physicist. I did some particle physics, I did some special relativity, but my main publications, when I did them, like I don't do them anymore because I'm going into educational science because I think understanding physics is, uh, like understanding how understanding of physics works is more important than understanding physics itself. So I, I, I want to 
I want to make it so more people understand it and want to do it and give more results and you know so uh, uh, you could react to the, uh, or review the book and the uh, Tencent version the, uh, they way more hard cipher than Netflix one perhaps I w we'll see I, I, I'm sorry I those timestamps it's a bit hard for me uh, RMG 480 I, I don't know what this is I can't go to it here so <laughs> The interest about the Chinese cultural revolution that killed most intellectuals, CCP wants to ban the movie for the scene alone. I can understand that. I can understand that. <laughs> Communist revolutions are never good for academics and people who value individual liberty. Yes, yes. Uh, as, I, as I said, I'm also something I really find uh, very important to understand. And I think the distinction is very important in this topic. And it's just opinion. So you might disagree and that's like completely reasonable. But... The idea of communism is based on good intentions. It is. It is a compassionate idea. But the problem is that corrupt assholes will take it every time. So you can't fight humanity. Like if you want to implement con communism and you think it's a good idea, which in core, like I, I see the arguments for it, but it, it is one of the fastest deteriorating ideas that like one of the ideas that quick, quickly just deteriorates your society. You know, that's, that's just observation. But and if you disagree, that's fine. Like I, I know there are many people out there that, that like communist apparently. Like I've had subscribers leave because I was rambling on communism and, and attacking it. Which I think you should do. You should attack every ideology, including capitalism, by the way. Like I'm not saying like I, I often have it that people are like, oh, but capitalism is also bad. Like, yeah, yeah, of course it is, right? I never said anything else. It's so weird. People always jump from, if I say communism is fucking atrocious, what it does, like applied, not the idea it applied. Because the idea, I would argue, is good, but the application is so fucked. Um, like, at least from the data we have, like, I'm a scientist, I'm sorry. Um and then people are like, yeah, but capitalism also did bad shit. And I'm like, yes, no shit, it did. Of course it did. Like, it's horrific in, 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 in extremes as well. Like, it's, I don't know. But, yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is so creepy and I love it. Yes, I do love it. It's That's what I love. Like, I'm a horror fan. I'm like, horror is my favorite genre. It is. Cosmic horror, especially in psychological, like those combined. That's why my, all my horror stories try to to address that as well. So those are like uh, real world necronomical levels of creepy. I already got that a bit. Gently and grimly revealing an abyss of horror hiding behind the curtains of those shining lights. Yeah, there are two lights or whatever he said. Your author is still living in China right now and the government is actually fine with his books. Certain topics are allowed to be talked about in China and the Cultural Revolution, although being a sensitive one seems to be one of those which won't give him much trouble. Uh, and the books were written 20 years ago, things were less stressed back then. Ah, oh, that makes sense, yeah. The, the thing is, I I do think these books become, and these stories become problematic if, if there's strain on your system. So I think 20 years back in China, they actually did pretty well, they had good times. And again, I don't know a lot about this, it's just what I heard. But I heard they were doing very well, and when I grew up, um, like when I was like, 13 I think one of my teachers actually uh, offered to teach us Mandarin because he was like China's gonna be the next economic superpower they are gonna uh, supersede or whatever you say in the USA like they would be better than them so you should learn that because it will be the world's language and I was like interesting but I didn't have the time to learn it I, I, I kind of do want to learn Chinese by the way like I like I like a lot of Chinese culture a lot of it like I think there are so many cool themes in it um, but like a bit older Chinese culture. Um, so yeah. And uh, the author living in China right now, he has to be careful though. I, I, I sincerely think that because if those books were written 20 years ago and there are just scenes in them, like if there's this cultural revolution scene, um, there is, and like abstractly speaking, there is a corrupt, or not corrupt, like there there is an entity that controls stuff and that pushes down scientists and that might start to happen in China nowadays and might not like I don't know but you know should it happen this book is a warning from that or, or like of that whatever you say so if that happens he might be in danger but again I don't know a lot about the Chinese communist thing I don't so take all of this as someone who just heard some stuff like please like be, be yeah 
detonate this explode terminal to the end. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did not know that. Like, I always thought terminate was the same as exterminate. I thought they were synonymous, so thank you for clearing this up. Uh, I would suggest maybe gather more data uh, in between pauses. You're coming into the situation these characters are in without their context and you're jumping to conclusions based on false assumptions. Yes, I know that's the problem. Like, I know that that's the weakness of the way I'm doing things, but I don't... Like, like I've, I have tried several ways of reacting to stuff. For example... <coughs> excuse me. People have told me, for example, write it down, discuss it in the end. And... It doesn't work. Like, I write down, I don't see the scenes, and in the end I forgot what the, the things I hastily scribbled down were. So, um, I do false assumptions, but I think that's the fun. Like, if I do false assumptions, I at least try to make you understand why I do them, and you like, and if you're like, yeah, man, it's gonna be in the next scene, then it's fine. But if it's not in the next scene, it will never come up, and it was an assumption that might add something, I risk that. You know, that's my risk. I risk this. Like, I, 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 I intentionally risk these things. You know? That's, that's the thing. That's my philosophy, at least. And I know for some people that's not it. And I understand. Like, if it's not for you, I understand if you don't want to watch stuff like this. I, I completely understand. Um, you can't please everyone. And that's, that's the, um, the, this is the thing I, I, like, I buy. In Germany, we would say, I, I buy that with, with what I'm doing. But uh, it's probably a stupid, not sense-making statement for you right now. <laughs> I hope you still understand what I mean. For example, when Zoll says science is broken, when she asks him about God, there are very good reasons why they're saying that, unlike the people who in real life like to combine God and physics. Yes, but... The, okay, so then I don't understand the argument. Yes, I'm coming to false assumptions, but that was not brought up yet in the episodes. Again. So I think it's okay to make that false assumption. That's what the reactions are for. But yeah, again, this this criticism, I'm aware of this. I I understand that, and that's something I'm willing to uh, risk. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens, and I sometimes laugh at it. Even if like if I predict something, I see this happens. I don't know. Uh, to tell you uh, why you are wrong would be a spoiler. The level of wrong science they talked about is like this. Imagine if every calculator in the world gives one plus one equals three. Even worse, sometimes calculators give 1 plus 1 equals 4. Sometimes it's 1 plus 1 is wrong, but never 1 plus 1 equals 2. How could you start research if the results are never consistent? Yes, I addressed this in the reaction to episode 3, so uh, I hope you watched that. I will address it there. Uh, the author who wrote this is not living in China. He's also a big supporter of the current regime. And not only living in China, he's a supporter of the current regime. As far as I know, he's not in trouble whatsoever because of his chapters on the Cultural Revolution. Although in the Chinese original print, those events are buried in the middle of the book to lessen their impact, when well, the international editions, the story opens pretty much like what you saw in the series. Yes, like I said, things can change. Like, I think China, until two or three years ago, as far as, again, as far as I heard, was in a very, very good place. But things with, with COVID started crumbling, and I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I, I just see biased media currently on that. Like, I either see... Chinese media, um, where they are like, everything's perfect. Or I see Western media where they're like, yeah, yeah they're going to die in two days, which is also stupid. You know, so I don't know. It's the, that's the problem with international media. You never know who's got what ag agenda. And I try to stay away from it as, as much as I can when I don't know. So, Also, Mo is dead and Winnie the Pooh now runs the country. That is true. He does. <laughs> there are tons of literature about the Cultural Revolution in China. They even have the term scar literature. That is interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. I might read that up. I don't have the time probably, but yeah. Chinese Communist Party has been critical of the Cultural Revolution since Ho Jintou at least. If not earlier, Xi Jinping's own father was killed during the... Oh, wow. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you for putting that up. That is interesting. So I understand it. So that might be a reason. Okay, oh, okay. So yeah, that might be a reason why he indeed supports the book. Because he's like, my father died here, I, assuming. My father died here, I want this out there, what killed my father, it should not have happened again. Uh, people think there are only two kinds of Chinese people, dissidents or bootleggers. People can't wrap their heads around the idea that they're just regular people. That is dangerous as well, I agree, I agree a thousand percent. 
Um, I don't know. So this is just me transferring uh, knowledge from other totalitarian regimes, which I, not, not totalitarian, authoritarian, I'm, I'm sorry, I mix up the words sometimes, authoritarian regimes, which I consider China to be an authoritarian regime. And um, it could it could dip into totalitarianism, but, but as far as I know, it's not yet. It is not yet. So it's authoritarian. Um, and in authoritarian regimes, it's often not that the problem, like the problem that arises is not from the authority that there is one, because that can be good. Like there are, um, there have been historical cases, I think, and don't like, don't completely nail me on this. I, I might be wrong again, that there have been dictators in Rome that were there to mitigate crises. So sometimes it's probably not that stupid to give one person that's capable and competent the reins for a period of time. And um, um, in any society, if there happens something where uh, 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 our people have like, like this implies for me, dissidents or bootleggers, this implies for me that there are, that there is a huge tension when talking about the country, and I have experienced it. So I've heard that either there are like dissidents, yes, or bootlickers. Yeah, I would actually think that's what I probably would would have thought of China had I known about the German history that was in. And I, I'm not comparing it because it's the same either content-wise or conceptually-wise, like it's completely not the same. It's just a case of an ideology in the country. Like that's how you, I hope you understand what I'm going to say. It's not like, not like the same case or the same kind of culture or anything. It's just, there is an idea in the country that is thought of as bad by some people. And I am one of those people. So uh, the painter Germany people, most of them were regular people. Regular people that had a part in their mind that was poisoned. And if you would consider the Chinese, that some Chinese communist stuff as poison, um, even then, even if you think that, then still there are normal people in China. Like, and it's just a thing in their mind. Uh, at least that's how I would, would, how I, how, how I would transfer my knowledge from other authoritarian regimes to China. But again, again, I do not know. Like, if there are Chinese people here who are like, yeah, you're completely wrong, just tell me. Like, I'm pretty open to stuff like this. So, I was not trying to suggest it was a bootlegger. I just pointed out that you can criticize the Cultural Revolution in China and also support the current regime. Yeah, even if, like, especially if Xi Jinping's father died because of that, like, I can get that. He must be so pissed. Some of my thoughts on current politics of China, I don't have any strong opinions. Neither has been placed without knowing all the deals. Yeah, I agree here. Mine, mine neither. Mine neither. Like, if I say stuff, say stuff about China, um, there is a lot of ignorance in that. There is a lot of ignorance in that, I think. And uh, it, that goes in both directions. I probably don't know some horrible stuff that's happening there. And I probably don't know some very good stuff that's happening there. Like, you know, I just don't know. And I'm very open about that, I hope. It's easy to criticize, blame, condemn, or praise. A lot of pro regimes from far away. Only people living in that country know the real Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Com like, thank you. Completely agree. A thousand percent agree, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I think as well. It's it's very hard. Uh, it's just this old discussion. It came up in the Attack on Titan reactions a lot. It's knowing and understanding. Uh, you might know some facts about the country, but if you're living there, you understand the country or part of it anyway. Um, the novel Three Body Problems is a better portrayal of the Cultural Revolution scene. You should check it out. I will. Uh, when it comes to the Chinese Cultural Revolution, most Chinese people, including the government itself, uh, will admit that it was basically mob justice with my resentment. That is a good start. I mean, that's healthy. And a lot of people in academia back then were people of upper middle class and beyond who can afford to not work hard labor as peasants, minus the factory workers. Uh, it's an old debate, man. I'm not going to go into that. Um, I'm not going to go into that too much here, but I understand that problem. It is an old debate. The the, the body bodily labor, I guess, versus the mind labor. It's a bit that, like, like you didn't say that, I know, but it's what I, it comes to mind here a bit. Um, I have a, one of my two best friends is a very, very, very hardworking man. Like, he works every day 10 hours, 
he like he scrubs the um the tanks of of boats he's he's painting them like he's destroying his body like he's 30 and he's like done like but he loves working like he wants to do something and that's so commendable and like i'm sitting in this chair here every day for eight hours or ten hours and i'm writing fucking papers and stuff and and and, and phoning people all around the world about what they think of quantum technology education and stuff and it's like completely different but i think both are equally worth worthwhile and i i i don't know um and i do indeed think that it is uh, like like it is it is hard it's it's two kinds of work that both are tremendously hard but in different ways and i've heard people say and i know a lot of people from i don't know if it's called working class it's probably the wrong word here it's i'm sorry for my bad english here but people that work a lot of physical jobs like you know because where i'm from that's what almost everyone did um and I've heard from them a lot that they have hard working days, they go home and they can relax. Their mind wanders off and they relax and that's their peace and that's the positive thing about their job. And for for my job, my body is intact, I would say. Like I've got some big stuff, but I go I you know, I go take a walk for two hours every day with my daughters and it's a luxury for the body, but my mind, man, I can't sleep. Like, I, I, I t it takes one or two hours to get to sleep. Like, I found a way to get to sleep very quickly. Like, <laughs> I actually watched Cracking the Cryptic. Shout out to that channel. Awesome, awesome, awesome dude. Two dudes, but I mainly watched the one dude. He's very calm, very kind soul. I think he, he, he solves the doku. And I can, the guy, I can follow that. And I slowly trail off because it's such, such a nice, calm atmosphere and such a brilliant man. And, you know, that, that's what it took for me to to go to sleep and i haven't found that out until very very recent that i can go to sleep with that because i always i lay there three two three hours i thought and thought and thought and that also strains you and i do not know how to weigh those two kinds of jobs against each other and anyway i don't know even know why i went on that tangent here but uh, yeah um and i think can you want not to work hard labor that is something I would take that as yes, I agree, and I take it as like everyone who who wants to do mind jobs and is capable uh, should be able to do them. Like um, like this peasant stuff or surf stuff, I really dislike, and I fucking dislike. As a fellow scientist, I know it is better when the masses support the execution of scientists in order to reduce the likelihood of that happening again. It is better to about things that prevent that condition that cause the masses to be resentful. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I do think, though, that nowadays um, the discussion policies, I don't, this is the wrong word, the, the, the way people discuss things is really, in many cases, fucking disgusting. And it's not the people's fault, even. You know, I there was a time in my life, and it was not that, that long ago, two or three years, perhaps four, I watched a lot of these online YouTube channels where X debates Y and X destroys Y. And what I really, really dislike about those, even though there were very good points made in some cases, um, is that this, this warlike structure of discussions, discussions should be fruitful. Discussions should be listening to the other person trying to figure out what they think and where you might err and i do not see that often i saw it sometimes i do but you know though i think that that's what what garners clicks and traction because in a way those like if two people shout at each other they're they're very ex let's call them extremist positions whatever it is um you have like everything in front of you like all all arguments like the ones against the ones before and your task is basically to see where you agree with person a and where you agree with person b and where you disagree with them like if you're like yeah this one person has everything right i personally if i had that nowadays i would be like yeah man think about it again 
do not blindly follow like these things. I don't know. So uh, I think because, but I think because of that, because the polarization of the, the discussion, um, people that discuss. Like they're always so polarizing and that starts making people resentful to these positions. And I see these people as avatars, so to speak, and I don't know if it's the right term, as avatars of extreme ideas. And that's not ideas that normal people have, I th from my experience, or should have, I also think, because then they get resentful. They resent the other position, basically, and yeah. I hope I didn't ramble too much on this one, uh, Mr. Randazalu. I, I hope I didn't misunderstand it too much as well. You probably meant something different. I'm sorry if I didn't understand it correctly. Uh, should be noted that despite the opening sequence, the story is not anti-communist. It is, in fact, anti-capitalist. But I can't explain this in this episode as it raises information I read later. I do think it is anti-communist. And I do think it is anti-capitalist. Uh, I do... I, I, but but I, I am not yet that far into the story. But basically my point is this, and I do not know if it's the point. I at least don't hear it, so it might be very unusual to make. Um, and again, if I'm wrong, tell me. But I am anti-extremist. And what I mean by that is, and I have... No, it's not out it. So I, there is an attack on Titan reaction where the um, authoritarian regimes are, uh, are a topic, the main topic. It's episode 320. Uh, attack on Titan season 3, episode 20. The reaction will be out in probably two weeks. Um, it is two hours, like, because there was so much to unpack there. Um, and it was exactly, exactly the right kind of story because it was anti- um, authoritarianism, but even, not even that, it was anti-big entities and I finally understood what I dislike in, in the world. And I do, I do, I think, dislike big entities. And I do both like big governments and big companies. I, I do like local stuff. And it does have some drawbacks to like do everything locally. It does have very big drawbacks. And I've talked to this uh, on Discord to people about that a lot because it's like it's not an easy thing. Like there's no easy thing we are talking about here. Like all of this is very complex, and I'm a fucking idiot. But um, I do think the opening scene is anti-communist and anti-capitalist because I think it is anti anti-big stuff, big ideas that spread into people. And like there are students shouting, we are right, we are right. And that is the sign for me of an ideology that went too far. And an ideology can be capitalism as well. And it can be communism. Communism, uh, in my experience and from what I know, does tend to destroy itself quicker and more horrifyingly, but I, I'm not arguing that capitalism isn't all so very detrimental. That's why my teacher always said, that's why we have both in Germany. We've got social um, social uh, market, uh, whatever you say. Um, they try to balance each other out because I think that's, I mean, that's a reasonable deal. Like, let them both fight all the time. You get the middle, hopefully, the center. Um, so, um, yeah, it's literally the depiction of the horrors that have come about from communism. Yeah, it felt very communist, like the depiction did. Um, I did do a lot of research on communist Korea for my horror story. Again, <laughs> it's linked in the in the pinned comment. It's the waters that hated. It's about communist and um, Korean society. But I try my best to be because I, I read it like that. It's normal people. Again, it's normal people doing their lives, hard lives. They had hard lives, very, very terribly hard lives. And not solely because of communism, not because of that solely. It's just sometimes life is very hard, like, like, and you're in an area where there are not enough resources and stuff. So, you know, hard lives. And the idea of communism is just like in the mind a bit. All of capitalism could be as well. I didn't write a story about that yet. I will. Because I think you should criticize all of the big ideologies. So, yeah. I'm of the opinion, and I will stop it at that um, 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 here, because it will derail. But I, I do, in fact, think 
if you have an idea and you think the idea is perfect, think again. I expect you to give me three reasons why your idea that you have that's so good will go to fucking shit. If you can't do that, think about it again. Think about it again. I'm serious. Like, like that's the best way, I think. Because if you have, if you can put forth an idea and you know where the drawbacks are and where it can go horribly wrong, because every idea can, I think you are a lot better off. Because then you can also try to put in countermeasures. Because your idea in the core might still be okay. You know? So, um, sorry. Those horrors are not unique to communism. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely, completely. Seems like the Santi, you you have extreme difficulty. I don't know. Santi, is an, I, I'm not going to read on here. I did not really read that um, because Santi is a spoiler. Uh, did I say they were exclusive communism? Pretty sure I just said the show depicting the horse of communism is pushed back to your claim. Blah, blah, blah. And in terms of. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I, I'm not going to go into that. I think you're yeah, you're arguing here. Like, 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 be civil. I hope you were civil. I, I think I'm going to stop here. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to stop here. I, like, if you argue in the comments, you are free to do so, of course. Like, I will never delete comments. The only comment I ever deleted was someone who called me uh, the painter man. I was like, yeah, man, why? That's not nice. <laughs> you, you devalue that, that argument, whatever. So, you know, but, but, but just be civil in the comments. As long as you're civil... Feel free to argue. We also on the Discord argue a lot about uh, philosophical stuff. And I've got uh, people from all, also all political aisles, I would say, there. And they, they are doing a very good job in like, talking to each other with a, a joy. Like, you can still have your opinion, but be civil. So I'm not going to read on. I hope you understand. This is going to be an awesome reaction on here for the top you can post. I will. Government silent because he wasn't supposed to be killed, at least not on the stage. So it shocked everyone when it went too far. Yes, I understand that. But it's still like that's the mob. That's the mob, man. That's the that's the awesome thing. That's why I like the scene. Public uh, uh, endings are not uh, strange or not old. And crowds would have cheered, especially if they were. The, yeah, yeah. I agree here, Charlie. I do agree. They would have cheered. They would have. That was my point. I did not. I do think the person writing that scene. Um, and again, it happens. Like I'm a writer too. Like I do shit. God, he didn't do shit. Like, like that was like very, uh, like, like tongue in cheek. Like, r doing some mistakes, so to speak, uh, it happens all the time. And I do think the crowd have should have. I think it was more powerful if the crowd cheered on more, but the person who did the the ending did the same thing because the actress nailed that scene. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's not interesting that the crowds would be shocked or even care. I agree. I agree, yeah. It's what I think as well. That's what I know from psychology as well. And uh, I did write a very horrific uh, scene in that story. I, I linked in the pinned comment where there's a crowd. Like there's a person in the crowd and the crowd is out getting a South Korean spy. And the crowd goes completely fucking mental, like, and they do really fucked up shit. It's probably the most fucked up thing they will do in the end that you've ever heard. And I'm not kidding. I, perhaps you've heard that once or twice in the story before, but it's so fricked. You definitely have some misconceptions about China from one of the authors living in China in support of the CCP. The CCP because this cultural revolution is a mistake. That is classic communism. Yes, I, but, but, but... Uh, Marty, I agree. I do have like. Feel free to correct them. Don't, don't, don't start. Like, don't stop. Like, even let's say you are misinformed by propaganda. I'm not saying you are by no means. You probably are not. But even if you were, I still would value your input. So always, always correct me or say if I'm wrong. I'm, it's very Im important because I do not think I'm right all the time. Like, I am pretty sure I'm pretty on point on physics stuff, and even there I'm sometimes shaky. And on psychology, I also think I'm often. Like, but even then, like, if there ever is anything where you're like, you're wrong, tell me. Always tell me. I'm not perfect, far from it. I'm a fucking idiot. I know some things, and I'm interested in everything. That's basically who I am, so. You can absolutely bet on Nobel Prize wins. Oh, you can. That's awesome. You can uh, bet on presidential election winners, Hugo book winners, literally anything. Yeah, I know those, but I like normal prize. I thought that was whatever. The message, I still see it. It was written after he gouged his eyes out. Oh. Oh, that's so nasty. <laughs> that's why it was bad that he could still see. Whatever he was seeing, it drove him to madness and self-deletion. Wow. 
you know, read the box or seen the show past season one, if a series is from a... Okay, I will... I hope... I, I'm afraid there will be spoilers, but yeah. Yeah, it's even worse. Oxford doesn't have a particular accelerator in real life, but we have to give license to for a story. That's what I thought, yeah. It's all science fiction, make-believe, not real. Uh, yes and no. That's very interesting, uh, Cheris. That's very interesting. Ooh, that's... I probably am not going to go more into that. I will just start talking a bit about it. But I think about this. Um, not real. Um, no, it's of course not material. I like the word material more. I think someone told me I'm mincing words, but I do not think I am. I think there are... I think it's important to be as precise as you can in some of the statements I'm making. Sometimes it doesn't fucking matter, but it is make-believe, I agree. It is not real, it is not material, but I would still say it is of utility. It is at least a dream of what could be. A dreams are what guide us. So I think it's important on that part. And um, coming back to Spam Filter 32, I do think suspension of disbelief for a story is a hard thing to handle. Um, when I'm writing my horror stories, I try to make them as real as possible, except for that one horror element that obviously is not real, you know? But because... I want to take a load off the, 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 the viewer's or reader's mind so they can concentrate on the horror themselves, so they don't have to think, oh, this is weird, this doesn't fit, you know? So, I don't know. Them doing it in Oxford, it's probably like, yeah, they had people in Oxford, that's where they did their shots, so that's where they filmed it. I, I get why you would choose there to be a particle accelerator, it's, it's fine, <laughs> so yeah. But again, Travis, that's... Uh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, it's fiction, which is it's not real, but it's science as well, so it might be real. I, anyway, but, but cool comment. Thank you. That's a cool comment. Uh, in the original book, the thing that Wing just calls me good. Yeah, uh, LKX TLKS. Shout outs to you a thousand times, man. That's so cool. I like you telling me that was that was so much more terrifying. Holy fuck, that was terrifying. Because it also links to the creation of the universe. Um, anyone would be better off reading some of the books and their ideas because the writing of the books is, is atrocious. The characters in the show might be over extent, but they are millions better than the characters in the of the book. It only gets worse than the second book or not. Um, I'm not going to continue reading the comments because I'm afraid of spoilers, but as I said, in science fiction, I do not care that much if characters are flat. I do like it more if they're not, but the same happened for me in horror for a while. When I wrote my horror stories, I started focusing on the horror, you know, making it scary. And the characters were, I think they were okay, but they were flatter than they are now. And I think in science fiction, I assume it's the same. You can, you can fall into the same trap as an author because, like, you have sci-fi ideas that you want to explore and the characters like... But in the end, I think everything is a human question, so you should always go back to the characters. It's it's a bit like in episode three, like it's not the three body problem you have to solve, it's like the human problem you have to solve, or the sun tree or whatever they're called problem you have to solve, you know. Uh, I'm curious about your thoughts on how you could prove science if your results are being sabotaged. You can't. You can't. You can never prove science. Like that's one of the most fundamental things. You can only, um, what do you say? What's the word? Not debunk. It, 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 is, it is a more, um, more scientific version of the word debunk that I do not have on my, in my mind right now. I'm sorry. Like, you can debunk science. Uh, dis you can't like, or disprove. It's, it's, it's a weird thing. Um, especially if, if, if the results are being sabotaged, you cannot derive anything from them. Um, so, I am... Um, I am of the, the opinion, and I think it's very reasonable to have that opinion, that that science always just draws from experiences. And by the way, even what you matter is, like, you look at it from your own eyes, from your own consciousness, from your own mind. So we'll put, you will put your biases into it. Because being biased is one of the most most human things there is. Like, it's 
I would say it's one of the most human things there is being biased. And that can lead to terrible things, of course, but it is how we operate in the world. Otherwise, you couldn't operate in the world. It would not be possible without biases. Uh, I like your brain and I really enjoy this reaction analysis. I hope you continue to reaction. I watch out for them. I will. I will uh, react to it. Don't worry. Um, I don't know what the scene is spam filter again, but I will just uh, uh, try to infer it from the context you give here. That scene exists to do exposition without the audience knowing that they are doing exposition. Yeah, sometimes that happens. We learned who these two characters are, what they do. It was an information dump, but done in a natural way. So we are not, oh boy, another exposition, how boring. Oh, what is it, the bar scene? No, I'm sorry. If it was the bar scene, that was an exposition scene. It was an exposition scene where they were like, oh, I'm so cool, I'm a scientist. Like, you could have written that better. Like, I, I agree with you that you should have, have the, the exposition woven to scenes, but the way they did it was bad writing. It was. It was probably the only bad writing I saw on the show till now. Like, the bar scene with, the, with Rufus uh, trying to hit on the, uh, what is it, uh, Sheng and uh, Augie, I think it was, but I'm not sure anymore. Like, that was badly read. The dialogue was atrocious. Oh, your, your reaction is amazing. The show is a little dumbed down compared to the original role, but I still think it's very good. Yeah, I do agree. I do agree. That, I mean, I was over that. Hope you enjoy the rest of the series. On episode three, it's awesome. Okay, I like the idea of drugs, like alcohol being an emotional stimulant, taking with the emotion you are currently feeling and increasing its intensity. It is only for alcohol for all emotions, though. That's the point. As far as I know, I did, I think I only read like one paper on this. Um, but alcohol is the one that uh, stim stimulates all emotions. Like, it will just enhance your emotional state as far as I know. And if there's anyone who has something, uh, counter evidence, just put it in the comments. I would be interested in that. But that's what I know. Um, for example, um, what's it called? Wheat. Wheat will make you more, more like, more calm. Like, so. And I've been reading up on some substances for my new horror story because there will be... It will be about substances and what you see. And I did a lot of research on what you actually see and try to make that into a horror story. And I think I'm succeeding currently. But so I, I, I've read up on some other substances and only alcohol, as far as I know, does this. So for what it's worth. So, yeah. Um, Xin Yu is considered as a hero in China. So contrary to your assumptions, there is a freedom of expression in China nowadays. Uh... While this does not follow from this, <laughs> it might be. Like, I've heard that like uh, my, my supervisor uh, was at an airport in Japan. And she met a Chinese woman. She had two phones. One was bugged because she was like, yeah, this is my official phone. I know the state's listening in. Uh, the other one is my free phone. So I don't know. I've heard, con I have heard other things. Um, also, freedom of expression is not like... I think it's a spectrum as well. I know that's a cop-out, I know, but I do think so. And I do think China's free expression stuff is more on the no free expression side. But again, I don't know. But what I've heard is there are a lot of instances in place to make sure that you do not criticize what is in the government too much. Again, might be might be very tropey what I'm saying here. I'm not sure. If they were true, Chinese economies already collapsed 10 times since the year 2008, believe me. Uh, you said, oh, you guess it. Yeah, I, you know, it's like, I don't know. I just hear stuff. What, I, what am I supposed to say? I read it on the internet. Like, how else am I supposed to know? I don't know the people. I don't know Chinese people, unfortunately. Like, I would love to know some. Like, because as I say, there's parts of Chinese culture I absolutely am interested in so much. It sounds so cool. But, um, China's economy collapsing. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not an economist. I've heard that there was a big living crisis. That's what I heard. I can. I will just reiterate here what I heard with the with the uh, uh, this um, this this camp stuff. I mean, they probably have camps. Every, like, and I only say that. Uh, so why do I say that? So I'm transparent. I say that because I know that all other communist or communistically um, colored, let's say it like that. I don't know if that's, I hope you understand what I mean. Every communistic colored governmental form or institution did proceed to have these camps. So it is not that far off. If I like, if I hear they have them, it's like, 
they always tend to do that. So while they might not exist, and I have to admit I did not see evidence for that because I didn't look, because it's a fucking horrific topic if it were true, and I don't want to read up on stuff like that all the time because like there's a lot of shit I read up on anyway because of the psychological stuff for horror I'm reading up. So you have to excuse me that I don't know. I don't know. So... The show doesn't show it clearly, but she was a high school student, so no, she hadn't ended anyone before. I don't think they were meant to end them all, just humiliate them. Yeah, but that's the brilliant writing in that scene. That's, that's like, the scene was well written, don't get me wrong, other than the crowd stopping to cheer. That's how it happens. Uh, it's just an accident. By the way, in Vinland Saga, they built that up very well, like ending a, a life. It starts with ending animals, and then you go to humans sometimes. I think in, uh, people who uh, become uh, oh, oops, uh, uh, become like a killers, it happens sometimes as well. So, Bold Soldiers is a rumor and something that actually happened at the radio dish. He admitted not being allowed up there, so he was just speculating randomly. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Okay, I, dis I got that wrong. Uh, please continue this. Best reactions for Einstein. I'm, I'm glad you, you feel like that. I, I hope I'm living up to your expectations. The book he gave her is a real book. It was one of the books that basically created the environmental movement in America. That's cool. Wow, I need to, I need to read that book. I'm always, I always love reading books that started movements. Very cool. Show is awesome, but you have to read the books. It's the best mind-bending, thought-provoking, surprising original hard sci-fi story it I've ever read. Nothing compares. Science and philosophy is just so good. You're the perfect reader for this. Yeah, I probably. I'm also nice uh, image here. <laughs> I see what you did here. Uh, please keep re re reacting to this. It's awesome. You're going to love the story. They just don't have a problem with science. All the high energy experiments go give nonsense results. Worldwide, fundamental science is truly broken from one man to the other. The laws are not changing. There is no laws anymore. The books convey that way is better. Yeah, I, I felt that as well from what I read from other comments here. Um, it, it parallels the problem of the three body thing. Like you can't predict stuff. So basically, you could think of it as um, the the tree Santi. I only read that name twice in episode three. So, so Santi might want to make humans feel what they felt with their predictions. So, uh, uh, so Clarence getting fired but still moving up, I believe, was because he was too good at his work, not because he was bad but corrupt. That his investigations took him to places that were political and he didn't stop his investigations, so his firings were political. Oh, that's awesome. Man, that's an awesome theory. Hypothesis. See, I sometimes make that mistake. It's an awesome, awesome way of looking at it. I love that. He keeps getting hired because he's too good. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's so good. That man, Spam Filter, thank you so much for that comment. That makes so much sense and I love it. That's my head cannon if it doesn't, if it's never come up. Um, yeah. It's not a common losing winning streak that gains someone such success. No, I still don't get how his last job got him to this one. He told all you about the Mexican man that ended his wife and girlfriend. That was not so obvious. I joke about why he pushed her off a cliff of tequila. Now it's uh, freaking hilarious, but uh, I still don't see how they got him fired from his last job and got him hired at the Black Palace. Yeah, perhaps that guy, um, the Mexican man, was a dry lord or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Please do the watch. I will have Tori. Uh, please continue with the rest of the video to find out why they react the way they did in this episode. I need to do a joke to me later. I will explain the joke, hopefully. Um, uh, do you mean the joke in episode 7? It's really unfunny because what's being conveyed is a theory not whimsy. When uh, 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 Soul figures it out in season 2, it'll make sense. Hint, what books did she dig out right before seeing him? Oh, yeah, I, I will not go back to that. That sounds fun. That found, sounds fun. I hope I will be able to explain the jokes. If I don't, like, PM me somewhere, I will. <laughs> Has the universe ever winked at you? Yeah, awesome line, awesome brilliant writing. When you talk uh, of food in the door, I'm assuming you're talking of building a career in the sciences. I'm wondering how you think a theoretical physicist or mathematician should approach things. Uh, what should be Stephen Wolfram's uh, of the world do if they are not experimental physicists firstly? Same. Same. Like, um, theoretical physicists tend to find each other. They do. Like, if you're a good theoretical physicist, like, you have to be good in theoretical physics. Um, 
and you have to be good with people as well. That's always the thing. You have to be good with people a bit. Like you have to talk to them. Um, like for example, if you apply for a job and you're brilliant, um, sometimes it's 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 enough to be brilliant, and the professor will recognize it and will take you in as a master student, PhD student, something. But uh, you have to be good with people as well. And as a mathematician or theoretical physicist, uh, you should like like if you're right now in university doing mathematics or theoretical physics, you should look for um, work group on your university and you should do a um, practical, you should do a experimental seminar with them, even if it's theoretical department, they will have that, at least in physics, uh, or you uh, uh, could uh, uh, apply for being a supervisor for like these, um, I don't know what it's called in English, so when you're in university you have to uh, uh, hand in problems for courses. And there are people, uh, teachers, assistants? Um, I don't know what they're called. At least the people like they correct your your problems and they give it back to you and explain to you what you did stupidly wrong. Apply for that position, and then you get in contact with the working group at least. And even if you don't get in contact with a professor, you at least get in contact with a PhD student that's there most of the time. And if you get good with them, like um, technically, like like if they understand that you do this stuff and you are in it, and you can ask them sometimes questions. Like don't be too pressing. Sometimes they're also not that good with people I, I I I have experienced, but like and then you like get into those groups and then if the professor recognizes you, you talk to him sometimes uh, and he knows you're good, like he will give you problems, you solve them, you give it to him, then he will uh he will take you to conferences, then yeah, there we will but we will need other theoretical physicists or for example, like I will just use physics, mathematics is probably diff uh, similar. Uh, and for example, in theoretical physics, then you would, like for example, in my university, there was a professor at CERN and he like took the best people automatically, he, he, he took them and he went with them to CERN. So, yeah, I hope that that, that is a good answer to you. And if not, uh, uh, ask me again. Also, if everything is turning to shit, then everything is the same. Uh, not necessarily, everything is just random. <laughs> so... I enjoy the series, but I warn you that for finding much more real uh, or faithful science to analyze, there are the three pro body problem books. Yes, Fabri, I know. I know. I will look into them. Don't worry. <laughs> Please uh, keep watching this. was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed the other episodes. Uh, really looking forward to this one and your take on it. When I read the books a few years ago, I was sometimes almost overwhelmed by the extensive expeditions and physics cosmology stuff. But together with the Expanse books and series, this has sparked immense interest in these topics within me. Yes, I might do Expanse. Um, I will do it. Like, like, I have said like two years ago or something, I will do Expanse reactions. I've not seen it and heard of it. Uh, uh, a student of mine who I who I supervised for a time, like I was on very good terms with him and he recommended The Expanse to me a lot because he was like, yeah, this is up your alley. I will do The Expanse, but I don't know when because currently I don't have the time editing live, live action stuff. That's why I do mostly anime. I also think animes do have a tremendous amount of good writing and brilliantly conveyed ideas, at least the good ones. Like there's a lot of, probably a lot of rubbish, but the ones I'm watching are very exceptional in writing. So they're like, they're short and I can quickly edit them. Like, like, like for example, doing a three body um, problem episode takes me four to five hours, you know? So, and an anime episode will take me if it's not a take on Titan where I talk about paint in Germany for three hours, like normally it's in like two hours. And then additionally, always like one to two hours rendering that also, but like editing and watching and stuff and doing the thumbnails that it takes me for live action it takes four to five hours. Like, for example, I did the one piece live action reactions and there was one reaction I worked for seven hours on editing and stuff and like it was like 200 people watched it and I was like yeah I'm not gonna do that like it's it's and it, I was very 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 sad about it because I loved that like I, I did finish the series but I was like yeah gonna stop doing live action now because I spent seven hours editing it and 200 people see it and then I spent um 
what two hours editing something and 10,000 people see it with Frieren, which is like, I'm not saying that the Frieren reactions are like, I did them because of that only. Like, it's brilliant. Frieren's brilliant writing, awesome. But for me, it was then like, I got my children, I became a father, and I have limited time now. Like, I have two to three hours a day. Sometimes I have the five hours a day. Sometimes I have no hours a day with my children. So I had to like go for, for things that are quicker to edit. That's why I don't do live action currently. So three body problem is an exception to my schedule. I love doing live action, but it's just so much work and and I love putting it in, but I like all the other content I'm doing will get left behind. So I, I hope you understand that. So please do more. I love to see how you react to certain things. Yeah, I hope you do. <laughs> Talk too much. Yes, that's what I warned you about in the beginning of the episode. So, um, but yeah, like if I talk too much, just leave. Like I'm not mad. Like I understand. Like it's not for everyone the style. Uh, keep watching. You like uh, you like episode five. The most especially as you love science and physics specifically. Gonna see what that is about. Fantastic reaction. I ho I, I'm glad you think that. Uh, what do you think about electron flood theory? I've never heard that. Never heard that. I do know, like, like I knew, do know that electrons are waves, like, like I described in the quantum world as waves, and you could be like, do metaphors with flood, but I have not heard this particular theory. I haven't heard of it. So uh, if it's something of importance to you, just uh, like PM me, ask me what it is, and yeah. Uh, this is a really interesting series for you to pick out. I came over here from the Attack on Titan and Frieren reactions. Yes, watch them there. I think they're good. But I read the book a series which was based on a few years ago. I'll definitely enjoy your physical and narrative analysis here. Like you may have guessed, uh, given the author was Chinese, the whole setting in and non-Chinese case for the most part is an original to the show. Yeah, I guessed that, but it works fine for me. Looks like the protagonist of the books isn't even in the series. Augie isn't in the book trilogy. The protagonist of the first book is a professor-level physicist named Wang Miao. Not sure if you'll get a name of later in the series or not, but kind of hard to predict. Uh, I understand the bind Netflix has that necessarily has made them internationalizing. You know, I do not mind that normally. Like, I really do like that. Uh, uh, I do like when Netflix does it. Like, have you seen 1899? It was a German production by my favorite TV show runners and writers, uh, Jantje Friese and uh, Omar. Don't know his uh, last name. They were brilliant. Like, they do the best TV there is. And they cancelled it after season one. Whatever. So, uh, but my point is, they had international as well. Like, if you have, if you're a brilliant writer, you can do that. You can internationalize things very well. And they do also think that the way they're doing it and three body problem is good. Good internationalization. I really like it. Um, but it would have been interesting to see a proper Chinese adaptation. I agree. I, I think there is a separate television series in China. Yes, I know. I, I might give it a look. One other thing for this episode, the opening scene of the book from the Chinese cultural tradition is one of the most valid chapters in the book I've ever read. Haha. -ha. So I challenge you, uh, Ao, oh god, I'm so sorry, Ao Tetsugashka, uh, that you listen to the horror story, The Waters That Hated, and tell me if the scene I have in the, uh, if in the story is more violent than this one. Um, yeah. The beginning of this episode is part of it, but nowhere near as horrific as with uh, what was written. Uh, the Netflix series may follow a different path, but from recollection, the book basically opens with Ye Bun Ji's younger sister uh, ending. I suspect the young female revolutionary student we see at the beginning is meant to be her, even though they don't say her name. Uh, yeah, that might be. That might be. That might be. Yeah. I've missed up for a reaction that is over an hour. Yeah, sometimes my reactions tend to be very long. <laughs> Really love your input. If you continue watching, uh, there will be lots of interesting physics-related content. Just finished the first season. I would love to hear from you what you, they could write and where they were incorrect. Yeah, I will try my best. Or sometimes also err. So also keep that in mind. But I will give you what I think. Even the little things you disagreed with get the new context. The further along you move in the story. So I look forward to more of your input for future episodes. Great reaction. Yeah. Also very important. I never, I never hold on to my views uh, if if they're challenged uh, and they're like disproven. Because that's like, that was just stupid. Sometimes, if, even if I do and people call me out for that, I don't know if people have yet. But if they do, like, I would be up for that. And yeah. When you're talking about the scientific method should be or is used, uh, is such an interesting debate. It's probably a bit different in astrophysics because it's not an applied science. So less of a profit move for bad actors. And because the tests for significance are so high, uh, I think it's five sigma. 
it's probably five sigma. I know CERN, CERN has five sigma. Um, that's how they at least detected Higgs. So, uh, so that field performing a test and then deriving the theory makes sense. Um, you would derive a law. And I know that's a bit, uh, it's probably really, this might, this might sound like word mincing again, and it is really not. You might, like from observations, you derive laws. The theory is the bigger, the, the explanation that you derive all the laws from in the end. It's very important, I think, to understand that. So, um, you derive laws. But that system would be catastrophic in economics, health, science, climate science, or any other applied science where a profit mo motive could exist that as well yeah yeah also like models in uh, economics healthcare climate science they always miss variables like always like it's so complex i i'm not even sure you can model them by the way uh it's it's the same it is actually the thing that comes up in episode one one three with the with the three body problem where they have the case of it works for a while but then it completely catastrophically goes completely haywire. That's exactly the same for economic and climate models, by the way. Um, so the challenge for climate scientists is actually as far as uh, I know and know from them to, to do models that are stable for at least 200 or 300 years, which is a very, very hard to do. I think they got a Nobel Prize for one, but I'm not sure. I don't follow climate science because also it's so charged. Like the problem is when I go into these things that are so charged that are not my main area of expertise and where I'm like, I'm kind of interested in this, but it would take me reading up on paper so much that I would waste all my life with that. And uh, so I don't do it. Um, so basically, I know that climate models are getting a lot better and I think they got a Nobel Prize for doing good predictions. But basically, the three body problem problem that they brought up in episode one, three is the same for every computational model. Always, always. So all of these that uh, uh, Gene Michael brings up here are having the problem. The, 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 the art is to understand where your model will go completely fucking nuts. And that's what you should do. So every model should have that estimate where will it not work anymore and if a model doesn't have that like be very careful be very careful um same system do experiment come up with theory after this is called pi king because the tests for significance are so much smaller in other fields yeah by by the way psychology is sometimes one sigma um it has a reason though and have led to a reproducibility crisis i know um I'm not going to go into that, I think. I do think it's a very big problem. I do agree completely, uh, Jim Michael. It's a very big problem, but I think it would. I would talk for an, half an hour about that here. I hope you understand why I don't. Um, but that's. I agree completely. I know what you mean, I think. It's it's very good comment. Again, like all, like many comments here are very good. And uh, also many are praising me, which also is very good. But uh, yeah, like, yeah, repository. The problem is, and I can just tell you from psychology, because I know both of these areas, you know, I know measurements in physics and in psychology, and I have seen physicists and psychologists go at each other because of their vastly different methods of, of analysis, and, and this is probably one of the most important things. So imagine it like this. Um, if you have a measurement, like I said, for example, the climate models or the economic models, you have to take, you have to give an estimate of how sure are you that they are working. And the estimate in physics is like um, what is called five sigma, which is a probability statement. Um, you are like the, the chance that we are wrong with this model is 0 0.0000000001%, something like that. Don't nail on the number, it's more to illustrate it. And in psychology is the, the probability I'm wrong is 0 0.5, so uh, 0 0.05, so 5%, or sometimes 1%. Like, and that's a difference, the big difference. And you've got a, if you've got big data, and you've got like static in the data or noise or whatever you say, like there's a problem. So in psychology, uh, you have very small sigmas. So it's a 1% chance at least that you're wrong. And 1% chance that you're wrong, like it might not sound like that much, but it is a lot. If you do like how many studies are done in psychology, for example, or ex ed 
educational sciences that are empirically uh, relying on this uh, one sigma man holy fuck yeah it's one or two sigma it's 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 95 or 99 percent uh, 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 probability to to be right um so man this, but but it's it is reasonable as well and, and physicists don't understand that by the way um because for example if i measure what i'm sometimes doing is i go to a to several classes in high school and they measure uh, how people think about quantum physics. Okay, so the problem is, how do you do that? So I give them like items where they are like, uh, um, for example, an item I would give them is like, in an afternoon, an electron is orbiting around the nucleus or the atomic core or whatever you say in English. That's an item they're like, disagree or agree. Okay, you can, you can get that answer from people, but what we do not, what we're not able to get is, for example, lots of information about the person answering, because obviously it's students, it's like personality rights or whatever you say, like you can basically not ask anything other than sex, like at, at age, like even asking their school grade is off limits sometimes. So you don't know anything, so you cannot control for those variables often. That's an extreme case. You can control for some variables, and psychology especially you do, but there are always so many variables, especially in the field. Like if you go to school, like what if they haven't slept? What if their parents are getting divorced? What if there's a pig flying outside of the window? Joking, of course, but sometimes like it's snowing. Again, everyone runs to the window. Happened once. Like you can't account for that so so yeah you can never be as sure as you're in physics because the reality is so complex and it's more than just two particles it's a thousand billion particles so to speak metaphorically speaking so so this is like it's reasonable but again gene michael you are completely correct it has like you can't reproduce a lot actually so yeah I don't think there's anything wrong with slightly reword the hypothesis to include a uh, nuance font so long as it's reproducible. I, I agree. That that's how you uh, that's how you evolve science. Exactly this. This is how you evolve science. Uh, in in physics, you would add a, like a, a, an expression to the term you're using, like the mathematical term, uh, a correction. It's called. I don't think there's anything wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when whenever profit motives are get involved, moral hazard is a huge problem in science. It is. It is like. Like, it's such a big problem. Um, the biases get in there. They always say that science is unbiased. That's so fucking stupid. It's not. Science might be about people or not, and people are evaluating stuff and interpreting stuff. For example, one example. Um, if you evaluate uh, correlations, which means like how things are related, basically. That's what a correlation is. So you evaluate how things are related and... Um, you have correlations of um, between zero, uh, minus one, and one. That's numbers you can get. Everything between those numbers you can get as a correlation. Uh, so zero is no correlation, like seems to not be linked, and one is like perfect correlation. For example, like they are completely linked apparently. Um, but you never get those results. You get like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.11. And now the question is: When is something really correlated, and when is it not? Like who decides the, the value everyone uses? And the answer, for example, is, for example, the community does. Like, you do reviews of a thousand studies. Hempel has done this, by the way. A guy called Hempel, I think, in 2009, he published a paper on that. And he did it, like, he took, I think, a 500 or a thousand, something like that, um, study of those correlations and was like, those were the values they got, and that is how I, they interpreted them. And on average, this this value is what they interpreted as slow correl uh, small correlation. This value was middle correlation. So so it's a consensus. Very very important. It is consensus. Science is so much driven by consensus, and you can attack that. Don't get me wrong, because my math teacher always said, and I. I really admired him, and that was one of the most clever things he said, and he did say many clever things. He said, if a thousand people are stupid, it's still stupid. You know? The consensus doesn't mean it's, like, that's not an argument. Like, it's a point towards something good. But yeah. Like, there's a paper, a hundred people against Einstein, who tried to disprove relativity, all of them, like, they, they all failed, of course, so... 
It's been a long time since I last published. Uh, uh, oh, God, I think I didn't see this. I can't think of any way to keep people honest other than hypothesis first, test second. Um, I've thought about it, actually. Um, I do think it's it's hard. It's hard. I think it should be... If you have a hypothesis, you should be aware of it. If you don't, it's okay. Like, but like, for example, if you say influence of uh, companies or whatever, you know, it can happen. Like, you're aware of what, what hypothesis they want. And then you should explicit, make it explicit to you and really test yourself on that. So that's my solution, but it's not perfect, of course. Uh, but it's been a long time since I published, so maybe things have changed. The fact that you're bringing up these debates and your reactions is awesome. Keep rooting. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you you enjoyed this. And I'm thank you for your comment. That was awesome. I would love if there was a discovery of a great unifying theory that made its relativity and quantum mechanics and start to open so many doors for new discoveries. Yeah, that's the big thing we are waiting for. I hope we get it. In books, the actual line was physics does not exist and the show they used to lie in science is broken. They do not elaborate on the show. But all the physics experiments they were doing seem to point that way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I get it. It's dumbing down, but I don't mind. It's a good dumbing down. Has the universe ever winged at you, Professor? Yeah. And me? If you're meaning me, uh, has it? There is something in the world called, I think they call it useful coincidences. For example, you see something on the media, if you, you're seeing it, like you just see something about, I don't know, dung beetles for the first time in your life, you've never heard of them. And the next day you, you go, go down the road, you see a dung beetle at your feet and it's like, what a coincidence. Like things like that happen, they do. So it's it's interesting. So in that way, I think yeah. You thought China was a police state at the time, but it was the opposite. They were anarchist. Mao support the people's purge of the government. Please know that at the beginning of the show, the hosts were a group of young people in Polo police because the police were also beaten. Um, I hope I didn't say yeah yeah. I I, I have to agree. I do. Th I did assume it was a police state. But that was not the point I was making. It was an authoritarian movement and students can be that. Like authoritarian doesn't have be, to be the government. Like 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 it's a group of people who say they are they have the authority. And that's what it was. And the author's not in trouble because the people who are now in power in China are the same people who were beaten on the ground. Yeah, I mean so they yeah. So I get it. Like we've been over this, I understand it. Um Yes they need people to criticize the cultural revolution, confirm that like just yeah, that might bite them in the ass though, by the way. I I don't know. What do I know? Yes, and if I remember correctly, in the book, the girls who beat his father to uh, death were only 14 or maybe 15 years old. Um, I do like it more that the girl was older, just because this 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 is a terribly interesting, like, it is terribly and interesting, this topic. Child, child soldiers, basically. Something like that. Not exactly, but in that vein. But um, it takes that out of the episode. It would have been too much, I feel. Um... Communism was peaceful, huh? Yeah, that's some communist stuffs. I was going to provide this man that was uh, that what he thought was awful of communism, social justice. Nowadays, we've seen this so called free world is becoming more like this dystopia and stupid wars and making the social divide and people fighting uh, over each ideology, liberals, conservatives, most of us Jews. You'll be bullied and boycotted just because you have independent thoughts and doesn't agree with the mainstream media's propaganda. People are getting humiliated or beaten up just because they don't like white or speak a different language. Yes. I don't get your first part, really. Uh, uh, ah, yeah, I, th I think I think I agree with, with you. I, I don't know. I think I do. I don't know if I get the comment correctly. If I don't, Stanley, I'm sorry. Um, I, it's a bit what I thought about the pol polarizing of people, but yes. Um, the dividing people, that's like, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, how, that's, I don't know why they do it. It might be malevolence. Um, I do agree that the West is turning dangerous. I do think that. Someone said, um, do you think the West is free? And I don't. I do think the West is freer than others, other societies. Um, from what I know. Again, just what I know. But again, it is not free. For example, Scotland currently, as far as I understand, has some very fishy laws. And I do believe there are, like, all the fishy laws currently that they implement in the West, they do come from 
at least a compassionate idea. I do think so. I do not think that everyone who tries to implement them is a malevolent asshole. Though I do think the malevolent assholes will take these laws and make them their own and use them, you know, but yeah. Um, so again, I do criticize implemented communism and socialism a lot, and I do, because I know where it leads, but I do not criticize the idea, and I, I don't know if it's the right English, English I'm using here, by the way. Um, the notion of being compassionate and look out for each other and make it so everyone has enough is very commendable. It is, but you can't force it, and if you try to force it, the assholes will go to the top. Because the problem with, at least that's like, so let's look at it more general, and it's just an observation personal, and it might be rubbish again. I, I need to say this often because I just want you to know it's not something that is the truth I'm saying here, something like that. It's just what I think, and I am in the process of thinking still, and I might be wrong on stuff, I might be more right than I think on stuff, so... Uh, but my problem is always, if there is a system people try to implement that sounds to be based on a very good premise, there will be the asshole cunts who come in and take that system and go to the top and turn it into a power fucking nightmare. Because they want everything and they will make sure that they have everything and it stays that way. And that will that is what I call would call corruption. There are other kinds of corruption, but every system corrupts. Capitalism does as well. Google, for example, I would say. There are people in Google that like just just look out for money. Like they don't care about the, the contents. They will pretend they do, but they don't. They want money. Or Hollywood stockholders. Like they just want more money. They they produce so much drivel that's just by the book shit. And good story writing has gone to the shitters, you know? It's getting corrupt. So it's not, not... If I do attack communism, I think, and socialism, implemented one, implement communism and socialism, and I know some people might say it's the same thing, the idea and the implementation, and you have to look at that, but I would, I would probably disagree, but I'm open for that argument one day. Like, it's interesting to me. But I would say implemented communism is fucking bad. And it goes down quicker, like, like, like it pulls civilization down the drain quicker than implemented capitalism does. And implemented capitalism, for example, does the same, but slower. You just have to be sure to, I think in all good ideas, you have to be sure to like reinvigorate them somehow, all the time. Interestingly, I think communism is in a way conservative. Because when the people in power are in power, um, they stay in power, which is conservative. They want to conserve the, the, the situation they have. They want to make sure they're not backstabbed. But again, I'm, I'm open for your understanding. People getting humiliated really up because they don't like, uh, 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 or do, yeah. Yeah, I, people are so, so vile these days, some of them, and some of them are some of them are, um, like, there are many good people still in the world, I think, as well. Like, we always focus on this bad stuff, but I know so many brilliant people that are so kind. So, why not show those people? Why not show the kind people in media? Why always show the, the absolute worst of humanity? Just to get clicks, of course, but it's easy to say, of course, that gives the money. Gives the money. And it gives the, like, it's not only the money, it shows what people want. Money is just the measure for that. It's what people want. They want these. I do think people want these extremes to, because it's easier to, to think in extremes, I think. It's, it's like, like, I mean, from a psychological perspective, it's easier to not waste resources on thinking about a position, like, in with complex thoughts and i don't sometimes as well i like like for example with uh let's say the china stuff i i told you about that i don't know a lot about like i do it there like you, you don't have eternal resources in your head i i get it i get it that's the problem it's a problem i don't know a solution to by the way like i don't know the writer does live in China is actually quite renowned. Yeah, I, I think we've been over this. Let me see if there's new th stuff. Sometimes I do feel people tend to confuse China with other authoritarian governments like Soviet or North Korea. Yes, I did. I did. Uh, uh, I did here. 
I can reflect on myself, I did. And I know China is more, China is capitalist parts. They use that. So, uh, yeah, I, and, and, and so, so um, yeah, I, I, it, it changes, I, I agree, yeah. So, so I hope uh, you understand that uh, because I, yeah, anyway. For someone who wrote about authoritarian traditions, this guy seems to know nothing about modern China, which is sad. Uh, me? I did, I did indeed write about authoritarian regimes, uh, which is sad knowing it's these types of people with deep-rooted prejudice that views people based on what they historically did and seems to ignore the history of his own people that largely self the prejudice by using research as a fact. I actually don't know what you're talking about. Uh... Deep rooted prejudice. That is also. I I do feel that that is. You know. You can say that, but why? Why do you assume that? Um, you you seem to. Uh, you you seem to. You seem to put a lot of thoughts into what I say that you have, which is not not uncommon. I understand, but I never said things like this. Um, also, I like uh, historically did. I, I assume you're talking about me. If you don't, I'm sorry. But when did I say what China historically did? I don't know what China historically did. You know, I do know some things about the formation of China from the manga kingdom, and I know it's not historically very accurate. Um, seems to ignore the history of its own people. Man, you have no fucking clue. Sorry. You have no fucking clue that I ignore the history of my people. And I don't even consider the painter people my people like that would be stupid, but man, this stuff like this makes me a bit mad. And I and no, I don't know if that was your intention, but what do you know about that? Sorry. What do you know about that? Like, if you're interested in my view on the history of my people, you can watch in two weeks my attack on Titan 320 reaction where I rip them a new one. But I mean if if uh, uh, largely self is the prejudice by using research as a facade, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Don't know what that's supposed to mean. I'm sorry. I I, I hope I did not. I I don't know. I, I don't know what you want to tell me here. I I just seriously don't know. I don't know. Uh, if you if if I really misunderstood you, I'm very sorry, and you could try to reformulate it. But this 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 is a bit jumbled and like just phrases and I don't know what you mean by that if you could give me examples I could answer more clearly to this I feel you uh, you have a th there are feelings you have about some stuff uh, that you hold very dear but they did not get conveyed by this for me so if you want to convey them perhaps rephrase them with concrete examples that would help me um yeah, apparently that you like love prof tree body problem is cosmic horror of the first 21st century. Yeah, I, I would currently agree. Yeah. <laughs> Don't apologize for giving a commentary. I love how engaged you are in the reaction because you give great insights. Yeah, I, I do my best. I just talk a lot. Uh, the reason why uh, the results uh, defy all known laws of physics is more properly explained in the books. But essentially the issue was that they ran the experiment multiple times and the same conditions every time and each time they got wildly different results. What they did in the books to describe what happened was uh, with a pool table, they placed a ball on the table and they hit the ball into a hole that repeated multiple times and of course the ball always went in the hole. However, what happened in the accelerators was that imagine the first time it went into the hole, the second time the ball suddenly flew all around the room, the third time the ball went backwards, the fourth time it went close to the speed of light and into the solar system, all without having changed the force and direction of... Yes, that is the thing. I do think... Um, so if they explained it in the book like this, they didn't understand it because it's the three-body problem. So the 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 the, the, the Santee do impose... Like, they, they pretty much um, amplify the three-body problem in physics for humans. So they understand it as well, because that's the thing. You can't, you can't uh, uh, change forth and direction. Like in reality, that's not something you can do. You always have different variations in those initial conditions. So you always have different experiments, so to speak. You just can't sum them up anymore. And that's the three-body problem, chaos. That's what's happening with the accelerators. The rules were so incomprehensible and different from one another that it didn't make any sense. Yeah, that would happen then, yeah. 
Yeah. Now, I don't know if that actually means physics does not exist anymore, but what do you think it, that actually happened in real life? What would you believe? I would try to find a rule, and if, it, uh, if there is no rule, um, I would just say physics is not the right way to describe this. I just, I would probably, yeah. So that means time and uh, space and time translation and symmetry no longer applies to the laws of quantum physics. Every experiment yields different results, making it impossible to discern a pattern. This physics is broken. However, I don't believe this just is for self delusion. At most, I don't consider it. Yeah, I agree. Like the self delusion has to have another cause. No, I won't look at spoilers. I won't look at spoilers. Okay. Can't wait for you to watch the series. Thanks. I will do my best. We get it. You don't believe in God and uh, thinks uh, communism and economical model makes people violent. What a clown. Uh, you come off as pseudo-intellectual with your ramblings. Learn to keep your mouth shut if you're not going to say anything that's of value. Okay. I think you're the same person who uh, had uh, strong emotions before. And again, I don't take this personally. I, I don't. So I, I answered to this because I didn't understand you. Uh, I did say neither. Yeah. I do believe in God. I do. Like, uh, yeah, like you can read my comment here. I will just put it in. You can read it. But I'm, I'm going to address it here. So it's just some things. We get it. You don't believe in God. I never said that. What the fuck? Like, when did I say that? I do believe in God. What? <laughs> Thinks communism and economic model makes people violent. It does. Every economic model makes people violent because people are pricks. Like, what the fuck? Where are you? Like, what? Put a clown. Okay, I, I don't. I mean, I'm a person a clown. I'm not denying that. I sometimes am a clown. You come off as a pseudo-intellectual with your ramblings. Yes, I sometimes am. I don't really know what you mean by pseudo-intellectual because I frankly don't know what you mean with most of what you write. Um, and that is not meant offensively. I just like I, You probably had uh, uh, several things you thought, but I, I, I just don't get them. Like If you rephrase them, I can answer. Um, so, as I said, physics, I would consider myself more an intellectual than a pseudo-intellectual. Psychology as well, uh, stories and writing as well. All the other stuff, I'm probably more pseudo intellectual. I, I actually I don't know what it means, so I'm probably not. I don't know what it means. I just think aloud. Like that's what I do in these. Like I think aloud. I think I tell you what I think, and I like most of the time the thoughts just come when I speak. So I might be dumb. I might be clown. So and if uh, if I don't say anything of value for you. Like, you should leave the channel. Like, I hope you find other videos that are of value. Because I don't waste want to waste your time. Because time is very precious. And I hope I, I hope you find uh, I hope you find content where, where you're like, yeah, that's of value of me. Like, that's that that's that's uh, that's what I hope. Tell me you don't know anything about communist China without telling me you don't know anything about communist China. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Apparently, like, that's fine. Yeah, the killed burst because of stupidity and stuff. Thousands. Yeah, I know that. I know that they like, and that actually that reminded me of Russia because in Russia they like w were like they didn't like in Soviet Union they didn't know how to plant crops, like in the government, and they told the farmers who didn't know how to plant crops to plant them the wrong way, and everyone who refused got killed or sent to gulag, and then everyone starved. So I mean, um, uh, um, so that's but but so that's the only thing I know. I know they had the policy of killing all the birds and then all the maggots or whatever didn't come and the plants didn't get pollinated or whatever the fuck I don't know. So yeah, I I actually I and, and uh, 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 so so I actually yeah uh, you did add some things so that was very interesting what you added I I, I read it. Um, so yeah yeah you you added a lot so uh, Luangu thank you so much for adding this uh, because like I said like this wasn't like. I like I really only knew this like basically like this is what I read, <laughs> so so thanks for adding more. Um, so uh, Chinese science still of catch up, and a lot of science was freely exchanged in Western countries, which by the way uh, by the way are enemies of China. Yeah, of course they are. Uh, like I know that, and are fonts of dangerous ideas. Yeah, I, I get that as well. Like I understand the Chinese perspective, even though I don't agree. They're like free thinking scientists are the Western thing. If I understood your comment. So we don't have that because it's Western and Westernness are apparently not what we want. Yeah, like I get their thinking at least. Like I don't agree, but sometimes it's not most. Uh, you are just unlucky and on someone's hit list. Yeah, that is well. 
<laughs> There's way more backstory and intrigue to Ye Winjing's backstory and how she had to to end a, a scientist and how she formed the ETO. I don't know what ETO is, but I hope we get that. Those are the serves of parallel of foreshadowing. Okay, I I I I I'm not gonna read that because it's a spoiler. I think I also didn't read it before. But okay, yeah. So thanks for for adding on to that. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I don't know a lot of China. Yeah, the terminate thing. Yeah, man, I'm so stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> The one depicted at the start of the series was the period of Cultural Revolution. The period science uh, was banned because they claimed it was against the dialectical materialism ideology. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. For about 10 to 15 years, uh, teachers and professors were forced to repudiate it and teach a new twisted version of it. This was particularly often in biology as they forbade teaching even basic concepts. Oh, that's bad. Like, reigning in science is such a fucking stupid move of a society. Like because it brings you back, and historically speaking, as far as I know, if you go back in time, it was worse all the time. Like we, we are like it's not very good now, but if you go back, it's worse. So, um, moreover, they substituted the medallion the theory uh, with Hogue theory. Oh God! Oh God! That's oh God! It sounds so bad. Uh, you know, teacher scientists who tried to post such a madness were sent to the re reconditioning camps. Of course, they were. Uh, Sean Lu, the author of the books, is a Chinese living China. He published his books in China first with no problems for the authorities. But today, China, although still formerly a communist country, has a deep contempt for the period of the Cultural Revolution. That is actually, at least that is like, I learned that from you all, so thank you. And that's, I think that's a good step. That's like, whatever there happens there, if they do condemn the Cultural Revolution, I like that. Like, I think that's right. Because, the, like, yeah. Those authors are relatively free to depict the truity of that period, yeah. I believe that it's because over the years there have been internal power struggles within the parties. So every time there's a new chairman, it's viewed as a new chapter with the current one acting as though it's better than the last. Yeah, I get that as well. You have to continue the uh, series. I enjoy, your uh, I enjoy your insight. Thanks. Thanks. I love how I get hit ideas when hearing they are uh, just going to stop working. Yeah, man, what the fuck were they doing? Seeing that science is broken because of some data doesn't fit. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Flipside it's showing you how world shattering those data are and why it would drive scientists crazy. It would drive them crazy, but not to self deletion, but to countless hours of coffee consumption. So, um, and I'm honestly impressed that the results essentially muddled all utility of particle accelerators all over the world for a while. How long can you bang your head against the wall with billions of dollars with no repeated results before people stop funding you? Yeah. <laughs> it's also nowadays what happens a bit. Particle accelerator and the interest specifically being shut down because of lack of funding, not because scientists scale out too easily. Uh, man, CERN also doesn't produce new stuff since 2010. No, 2012, I'm sorry. 6th of July was his discovery, 2012, I think. Best reaction I've seen. I, thank you so much. I would love the start of commentary for the show series. Your perspective makes it interesting. Thank you. Pause as much as you want. Yeah, I will. Definitely will. So thanks. I'm, I'm glad I, this like this style doesn't work for everyone. But if it works for you, I'm very glad. And I hope I bring some new stuff to you. Uh, awesome you bring this up. I, I hope I can understand from the context what 8383 uh, was. When the laws of physics literally different than the beginning of the universe. Yes. Perhaps. We don't know. We don't know. It's so brilliant. We don't know. Um, where the four fundamental forces were unified. We think that, but we don't have the unified theory, so we don't know. It's just a hypothesis currently. It's not a theory. That's where the distinction is important, by the way. I think it would be weird not to expect physics to change, especially over much larger scales. Why would we assume instead? Yeah, it's like... I think I said it in episode two, it's a belief physicists have. And it's different from a religious belief. Of course, I know that, but it's still a belief. You believe that laws will apply again. It's faith, even though it's... Uh, physicists would probably say, not necessarily me, but people I've talked to would say, it's a lot more likely that your faith is rewarded in physics than in religion. That's what they say when I talk to them, some of them. But like, I have different opinions, but they are so out of the box that I don't want to bore you with them. So, uh, the reason they say science is dead is because all experimental res results comes out of uh, without any pattern, like hitting the ball with the same force. I mean, yeah, that's the thing you can't you can't hit the ball with the same stuff. Like that's such a that is actually I would consider it a misconception in science actually, and we at least I try to to teach the teachers I train for physics education that um, make clear that 
there are always errors in your experiments and the starting conditions are error error uh, laden like there are error bars on your starting conditions always like and and the problem we have actually is that younger children like ages what was it a colleague of mine did that research oh god oh god i'm so sorry my colleague i forgot the age range 8 to 12 something like that they they, they can't grasp that really and they, he tried his best in his phd thesis uh, to to find a method to make very young children already understand that there's always error in science. So, yeah. Uh, well, I feel like I'm feeling, uh, finally watching the show along with someone intelligent. I mean, I am intelligent, like IQ wise, but that doesn't mean I'm wise. So be careful. You must do the rest of the episodes regarding people saying the books are more detailed. Of course, they are. They always are. <laughs> I, I agree, probably. Uh, but they did a good job in simplifying and still including all the major concepts. I'm glad they did. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's not dumbed down, simplified. Those two are different things. Love the show. Think people that haven't read the books miss some of the crucial points. They're all there in the show, but sometimes so brief they just miss key info and make error and assumptions. Yeah, I mean that happens. Uh, new to the channel, first video. This is awesome. I hope you do every episode. Always uh, already subscribed. Thanks. Also check out my other content. Like I do these reaction styles for all the stuff I do. At least I did. Attack on Titan and Frieren and I'm currently finishing solo leveling and what was the other one? Chainsaw Man, although I did not do it all the time like that. And Bleach. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, just for your information, this is based on books and so still sci-fi. The science is more well thought out and explained better in the books. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait for the book. As an electrical engineer, please do not shatter my belief in Ohm's Law. <laughs> it's everything to me. <laughs> I get you, man. But it's it's belief. I don't want to shatter your belief. Like your belief in Ohm's law is pretty reasonable, I would say. So don't don't stop believing in Ohm's law. <laughs> Opinion on you when you is quite interesting. Uh, I'd very much like to see how that opinion evolved. Please continue. Yeah, it evolved. Like uh, a year when ye, and I'm probably butchering her name. Such an awesome character. Like, so well written. I love characters like her. So morally grey as well. Too much talk, too many pause. As I said before the reaction, so it's on you. <laughs> uh, great to have an actual scientist react. It really compliments the show. One gets the sense that the writer actually has scientific knowledge or spoken to scientists. Yeah, definitely. Like a thousand percent. Like that, like the writer, as far as I know, was or is an engineer. And you know. Like, oh god, my eyes get teary. I'm sorry, I'm rubbing them all the time, so you have to excuse me. Uh, yeah. Three body problem basically made the whole alien thing scary, like actually scary. Agreed, totally agreed. It's hard to make aliens scary, so. Because it's so tropey, I feel. Need more reactions with the series, not the pause and the comedy creep reaction. I will, I will, I will. Uh, I will when I uh, stop recording this, and I will not edit this recording like why would i it's like it will render for three hours so you get it all in one so i hope you uh yeah i just but after that i will render episode three so you will get that tomorrow don't know why the show doesn't explain this but in the books there was i uh, got the results of the experiments in the particle accelerators was completely random which made performing the experiments a waste of time I mean, it's never a waste of time to perform experiments, especially if they give varying results, but I get the point. Like, yeah, it's like... <laughs> the crowd's reaction was perfect. They wanted to punish someone for their fears and losses, but didn't realize the repercussions for giving in to hate and anger. Yeah, I I get the point, don't get me wrong, but it's not what a mob mentality is. I don't think so. Like, I've read up on that in psychology for my new story. Or no, for the, for the waters that hate it. Again, link in the comments. <laughs> You can listen to it for free. I'm, I'm sorry. You know I don't do sponsors. I, I think that's stupid, but I will promote myself sometimes. I hope you excuse me that. But but yeah, I think mob mentality, like, they might, when they go home, they might realize, but not at that moment. Not at that moment. Um, it's an event that changed everyone the day. That is, like, I agree with it, but it would have been when they went home. It's not like, yeah. Remember, Mod X is inhuman, but they are still human. Each one of them now carries guilt, whether they are in denial or not, will push them further into hate or ruin. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I agree with that completely. Like, that, that, 
completely agreed, but not in that moment. Like they would have gone home and stopped. Like like when they stopped being the mob, then they would have understood. Um, most of them, like there are some who would have stopped, but because the thing as well is when everyone's shouting and something like this happens and some people keep shouting and you would stop shouting, you are the one that might be singled out by them as well. Why are you not shouting anymore? You know, something at least, yeah. Four light years away, yeah. I now know that it is indeed five light years away. <laughs> Best reaction commentary on the show so far. We'll keep watching if you do the rest of the episodes. I will. So, can't wait next. I hope you like the next. It's continuing the series. Fun watching along with someone else from real physics. Yeah, I hope, yeah, yeah. And if I do stupid stuff in physics, I sometimes or tell me. Um, there's a show called Devs on the BBC to explores the idea of determinism, but they try to explore it using physics. They try to make a machine. It's brilliant. I would love you to watch it after you watch the body problem. Just found your channel. Love it. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad you love it. Also check out the other content. But yeah, um, determinism. I did write a paper and publish it in a pretty high-ranking journal as well, I think, about determinism in quantum physics, basically. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't the focus of the paper, what it was what you could derive from the findings in the paper. And there is determinism. Quantum physics is determined, but, you, but for, from our perspective, it is not. So, so like, it doesn't matter for us. Like, like we, can never, we can never understand the determinism of quantum physics. That's the problem. So, for, for, for argument's sake, for our world, it's completely, like, not completely, but it's not deterministic. But anyway, anyway... It would have been nice if you didn't spoil it and just let him watch it. She's, uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 oh, you, you did, you did delete it. I, I don't know what you wrote. It's fine. Like, but yeah, if, if you want, uh, if that's okay. Like if you want to do a spoiler and put, put spoiler and then do that gap, that's fine. Don't worry, mate. Don't worry. Um. Uh, I've had, I haven't gone through all the comments, so I don't know if someone else has said it, but in the book they made it clear that it wasn't just completely new. Yeah, exactly. And if nothing is repeatable, it is essentially impossible to construct new theories, hypotheses. Yeah, that's the problem. That's cool. So in essence, it was scientific method and physics that was broken. Um, it wasn't completely broken, as far as I understood, though, but it was not pliable anymore. Like, it still worked, but not well enough. That gives a bit more insight into why a lot of physicists were depressed and some chose to unalive themselves. Yeah, but I I know the thing with the unaliving there has to be something different. There has to be, because no one would do that, I know. No one. Um this is not only really true, just Google Scarlet Resurna. Yeah, we've we've been over this. I I'm not I think I will just skip through this a bit. Uh, yeah, the, the Chinese version, I, I heard it, I need, so if it has more science and philosophy, I might check it out on my own and uh, pick some scenes I want to discuss. China is obviously not as open and democratic as Western countries, but I think there are many others who have the same assumptions as you, and it's because in Western countries there is propaganda. I agree. Completely agree. I, I know Western. Western media is so fucking propaganda laden as well. I probably think it's not as propaganda laden as China still, for example. Again, I don't know. That's my what I what I what I feel, but I know that there's a lot of propaganda in in every country currently. Um, yeah, the the author lives in China, right? I know. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. It's amazing. Yeah, that she's beloved. Yeah, I, I do think so. Um, Stan, I would have given I wouldn't have given you a lecture about current China. Still, I want you to know that current China is similar to the rest of the world again. How society works, how people live their lives, except for its government's ideology, which you can learn more. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I also believe that's probably the best. Like, that is the most reasonable explanation I heard yet. That like because it's in line with with other ideologically um, affected regimes or or countries or societies. Like, it's normal life, but the, the ideology will bleed through in situations. So, short China, you see in the show, is gone for good. It's a history that every Chinese person knows and admits to its cruelty. That's also, like, I like that. Like, you have to admit your mistakes. Uh, oh, and I I did not press the shift key here. <laughs> it's the most clear problem of trying to educate yourself on a political charge subject. There's a pro, pro-propaganda, anti-propaganda. Yeah, man, that's the thing, man. Holy fuck, I hate that so much nowadays. That's the problem with these charged positions that are getting clicks. You just see them. Like, 
oh God, I would love to talk to people and just ask them more nuanced questions. Like every time I see a fucking debate online, just get a fucking prompt somewhere and look with blah, 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 destroys blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck do I care? Talk to each other, man. God, I hate it. I would love to talk to people more. Don't have time. So, yeah. Because I do think one of the things that makes debates nowadays so heated is that both parties just want to like transfer their point to the audience and not like like learn. And I get that sentiment as well, but man, it's so grating. One thing you should keep in mind is that the repression of sentences because of political ideologies is no way new to communism. Yeah, no, don't worry. I, I don't, I know. I, it's, I, I, I get that uh, uh, you could read it as I'm only singling out communism here, but I absolutely do not. Don't believe that for a second, man. Like, if for all of you who think I'm just anti-communist in, in that part, um, I think you will understand what I'm on about in the Attack on Titan reaction. Like, I know you probably didn't watch Attack on Titan, but you will learn some stuff about our German history as well, because I asked a lot of people that lived in the certain times. I did go around and ask them, um, and I tell you some stuff about those times in the 1930s and 40s, how it was from their perspective, uh, unofficially, like not what you see in the media, but when you ask them drinking a tea or a scotch, like what they really say, and I talk about that there. And I have tried a lot to understand these, like, let's say ideologically connotated or perhaps even poisoned, not saying which case this is, but uh, societies. And there are patterns and stuff. And I am advocating being aware of them and fighting them. And communism is just here an example. That's by no way all there is. No way. Like, I know the painter people, if you know what I mean. Like, I know them inside out and backwards because that's our history here. And I've read books on them and I've, I've talked to people that lived in those times. I've talked to people that were a part, a part of them and were hunted by them. You know, I've talked to them and I know, I know a bit of what it's like. I don't really... Because how could I? I will not. I will not sit here and pretend I do know a lot about it. But I've at least talked to the people, and I've I've seen and like I've looked into their eyes, and I've seen them cry. So you know. Anyway, I'm sorry. It's like, it's just a topic that that I read up on and did research on on my own. I never visited a course. I never heard a lecture. It's just something I I think about. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. Like, I'm not a political commentator. What do I know about politics? I know shit. I don't even know half the words people use in these debates. So, and like, I'm a scientist of physics and psychology. So, anyway, like, like they, they take this as more as pub talk of someone who's sitting in a pub and talk to these people. Like, that's, like, on these issues, that's nothing more what I do. I don't consider it more. I don't consider it big intellectual stuff. I just try to to understand it myself here. All countries engaged in political repression, oftentimes uh, ending my country, ended an entire political party. Yeah, Colombia. F f when I was young, I had a girl in my class from Colombia, and she talked about that sometimes. Very, very, very little. So I didn't even realize it really when I was young. So yeah, all news are biased. Yeah, fuck yeah, they are. So please understand that what you think about your country's enemies is most likely exaggerated or fabricated. Yeah, I, I don't need to understand that. I know that. I know that. I know that. And I'm thinking of, for myself at least, of solutions how to circumvent. God, I'm sorry. I don't. I hate. I'm not going to like myself here. You know, it's yeah. It's it's a problem we have currently. Opening sequences from Cultural Revolution, even though heaps of people died during the time, direct ending would have been very uncommon, which is why the crowd is in shock. It's also, by the way, you get confronted with what's happening in the camps all the time. If they had camps, I don't know. But in Russia, they had camps. For example, I'm talking about Russia right now. That was a leap in my thinking. Sorry. So, yeah. Usually, the person being prosecuted would just admit to the crimes in order to live. And what if they don't? What if they have conviction and are not spineless? And don't get me wrong, I would be spineless as well. Like, I would be. Like, I have children. I would be spineless as fuck there. But uh, if not, they usually run in jail or maybe be beaten to death. The girl who killed 
Gibbing's father is in the military, but a red guard. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, that got cleared up. Thank you. No, the writer does live in China, and he's a star. Yeah, I, I like that. I hope he continues to be a star. This was so entertaining. Cope, hope you keep doing more videos. Yeah, I will. Pre appreciate your comments and impressions. Very informative and gives context. I hope I do get give you sensible context. Uh, if you uh, like themes revolving around knowing too much and encountering the divine, I do. Check out my horror story, uh, The Dangers of Lucid Dreaming, which deals with it, or The World Was Never Ours. Also linked under this uh, reaction here. Check, check them out. They're like... Rebirth reads them very well. And I think the stories are passable. Like, The Waters the Hate is really good, but all the other stories I did are also, I think, very entertaining. So anyway, um, again, self self promotion here, but I can't help myself. You might enjoy the short story of Ted Young, probably most famous for his piece, The Story of Your Life. Oh, that's so cool. I love I love the new only seen Arrival, Sicario and the Dune movies, but he already is one of my favorite directors of all time. I need more. Oh. When Dune came out and my, my my channel basically started a bit with Dune, like I got my first, I got to 25 subs with Dune trailer reactions because I didn't know Dune and I reacted and just did what I do here with Dune and I love Dune now, like awesome stuff. And um I planned on doing reactions to all of his movies f in preparations for Dune 1 and I couldn't figure out how to edit, so I never did it. I, edit I did Sicario, there's a Sicario blind reaction on my channel and it's really badly edited, I think, like you can't see what's going on because I didn't know and uh, so, but I might do it in the future. His best story on the topic was Hell is the Absence of God. Oh, holy shit, what an awesome title. I agree as well, by the way. What a world where cultures with the holy are frequent but impossible to predict or to understand. Holy hell, that sounds awesome. That sounds fucking awesome. I'm gonna look for it. Another story is, uh, of his topic is Tower of Babylon. Oh, I love Tower of Babylon as well. Thanks for your video. I've always wanted to know the reaction from physicists uh, that yet knows the plots of the story. Your raw reaction with professional knowledge helps me understand how physicists report mysterious incidents in the show. Yeah, but also uh, be aware that I am. I've thought a lot about spiritual stuff and supernat supernatural and paranormal stuff, and I've probably got a very unique perspective that's very uncommon among physicists. I know, though, that many of my colleagues are indeed spiritual and many are Christian that I know, but it's because I'm a Westerner, you know. So the conversation about the, what physics students do after graduating, my professor for always said that if we didn't do our PhDs, we'd become programmers. <laughs> yeah, it's also true. 15 years later, well, I moved more towards data science, but most of them coding. It's not bad, though. Like, I think physicists, a colleague of mine, like, we have practicals in physics, like, you do experiments and you have to report on them. And one of my colleagues once told me, and he was the one in charge of um, training the, the PhD, like, 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 vetting the future PhD students. And he said, um, no one, not a single one of them understands coding in any way. And you need to do that. Because if you buy stuff from companies, you pay a million million dollars. Not exaggerating. Like, like things cost a million to two million dollars. And if you know uh, 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 Raspberry Pi or Arduino or something like that, you can put that down to 20,000. And that's a big, big, big difference. So you need to be able to be creative and to program with what you have. And that's why he, he wanted to do more training on that in the... In the um, and the physics curricula in university. And I started working with it, but then I changed position, unfortunately. So, but like, like, like we had some ideas and I think he still does it. I hope he does. He was a brilliant, or he's a brilliant dude and he's, he's right for the job. So, um, uh, something to say that, yeah, Chinese living in China. Yeah, I, I know. I think we've gone about the author stuff. A Wandering Earth is from him as well. I just saw that by some cinema, uh, like summary stuff. Story takes place in a very dark period of history. Yeah, okay, I think we were over that. I'm sorry, but yeah. Why relate the question why relate God and physics is more axiom-based than religious? So from my understanding, people like us who have both a religious background but grown themselves in science, to formulate our opinions, there comes a point where we all ask ourselves, why like this? Why can't it work another way? 
Often, yeah, I agree. Okay, I see that. Yes, I agree. Often we come to the idea because physics doesn't allow it, which creates an awkward juxtaposition between which is mightier God of physics. If we hold true, physics is the law of existence. Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. Okay, let's go through it. But I, I think I heard my children crying. I don't think they are crying. I will just go through it. Um, often we come to the idea because physics doesn't allow it, which creates, yeah. If we hold true, physics is the law of existence, what created and defined physics for the control, for that control. Uh, many world theory gives space for physics to... Uh, I, I'm going to skip through it a bit, but I will read it, but I will just not read it out because it's slow. God will miss me. Okay, so I see. Okay, I see. I see. So, um... Oh. Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, I, I will read it after this video is finished, but I've been recording for two hours I'm, and I have to go to bed. But um, I hope I did not, I skimmed through it a bit. So it is the, the kind of God that is a sentient being, a sentient entity again, that is like created the universe. Someone, I think, in, said to comment a tongue in cheek pet project of someone in school. It's our universe. It's fun. I like that idea a lot. I've thought about it myself, but that's not what is what I think people mean by God most of the time. Some do, and physicists sometimes do, but I do think God is something completely different. And I do think the church would not say like this is God because I've thought about that for so many years now because I was a very, very religious person when I was young and I was a very, very atheist person when I was in my teenage years and I experienced both sides and now I'm something different. And the way I understand the Bible is just, it is about humanity, how it evolved, how we should act or how we have acted with each other. And it doesn't have to be with the universe or the laws. It's the laws of society that are in, the, for example, the Bible. It's not the laws of nature. So the God of the Bible is not the law, like a God like this, because this has nothing to do with how we should act and why. But yeah, yeah. China is still in communist times. Uh, yeah, I think they are a bit. They have both. And the right of this novel is alive in China. Yeah. Hope you can open up a mind to draw your eyes of the present time with a lens from uh, Painter Man's uh, <laughs> mouse error without the evidence of the real data. Yeah, again, I, I, I admit I don't know the real data. Like, I admit that. Uh, people and society changes with time. I hope they do, yeah. If you get hit, uh, if you get hit on, you wouldn't be this awkward. You really missed the point of the scene, this random guy is coming out interrupting the conversation. Both of them are very clear, not interested in being hit on. He's clear about to make some sort of a sexist assumption. Uh, ah, no, don't come with that. I don't like that. Why? Why would he do that? That is what the scene wants me to believe, but I didn't. He seemed like a cool guy. Like, I know the scene wants me to think that. But that's rubbish writing. It's rubbish writing that I see a lot nowadays. It's not good writing. Why? why it is a disco. You have good time. There are girls sitting there. Go up to them if you have balls. Not like me. I wouldn't. Like, I've been so fucking awkward and just I've been four times in a disco in my life because I'm such an awkward fuck. Like <laughs> I danced with a girl for an, for two hours and, and smiled at her and she smiled at me back and there was like a dude coming one like after half an hour. He, Hit on her! And I'm like, I'm too awkward. No, it's like, oh, it's terrible. One of my worst memories, core memory done, whatever you say. So, I do not think this is real life, what they try to portray with this, oh, I'm hitting on girls. And they're like, no, no, you're just sexist. Like, come on, man, it's so shallow. I don't think there was, I hope that's not what they wanted to convey. So, but this is how they want me to see it. I think they wanted to. So And so they shut him down immediately by coldly describing their jobs so they can get back to talking. No. No. The scene was clearly, we have high and mighty jobs. What do you peasant want with us? That's how it came off to me. You know how the guy's interruption also interrupts the exposition to the audience. They're both about to tell us how and why science is broken, which as the audience we're desperately trying to understand more about and instead we're delayed because they have to fend off this asshole. Why was he an asshole? Like, she even asks him, hey, Rufus, do you see it? Like, like that, that is what, what I would argue, like, because they wrote in that later, that is why I argue this is what they tried. Like, when they wrote it, that's probably what they had in mind, what you write here. But that's not how it came off to me. That this, 
again, opinion, but it came off to me as he's a chill dude, he probably had too much weed, there are two hot girls, they're like, like talking, and so he's like, how can I hit on them? They're having a conversation. It's probably good if I join in into the conversation, but how do I do it? Like, so, and he was awkward, yeah, but that's how men sometimes are. Like, don't put every man down who hits on someone as a sexist asshole, like, why? Like, so, and because later she, Oggy, Oggy, Oggy asks him, do you see this? Like, he goes to him because he's the one who kn she knows, and he's, like, asking him, like, like then he's not beneath her anymore, where he need, she needs help. Like, I, I can do it like this. Isn't that also sexist? No, the poor woman needs help goes to the man. I could interpret that as well. I don't. I think that's a stupid interpretation that I just said. But, you know, it's like, that's bad writing. I do agree with the audience is, uh, is, is annoyed with him, though. I, I agree. Because he did, I give you that point, he did interrupt the exposition and I hate him for that. I do. But I liked Rufus. Rufus, like, was not an asshole in any way. He was a nice dude. Like, that's, like, like how was he supposed to do it? Like, they're, like, like, I never understand that, but like I truly don't because I'm so shit at it. Like, let's say I was Rufus. I'm in a bar, having a good time. I've got, I had a bit of weed because it's legal in Germany now. So I, I probably would have had weed. I never had it, but I don't know. Perhaps I would have as a student or whatever he was. So I see these hot chicks and I am not me and not a stupid awkward fuck. I would go to them like, how can I start a conversation? And I would be chill like, what are you supposed to do? Like, how would you do it then, like, Max? How would you do it? I would be interested in that. <laughs> like, but, but I don't know. That's why I think it's the only bad scene in the show as well. The, the hitting on them and the exposition. Uh, so, oh, we've got a long one. I hope I will skip through it. Or in the novel, this conservation had more depth, which might be later added in the sequel and some other roundabout. Okay, let's quickly go through it. Do you believe in God? What kind of God do you mean? Oh! always already better in the novel that's exactly what that is exactly what you should ask someone who says that holy fuck this is so good brilliant writing what kind of god do you mean that's exactly what you should ask immediately if anyone asks you this do you believe in god because do you believe in the god of society or the god of science so to speak like in that the one who created the universe or the one who created like who we strive for in religious texts just god what kind of God do you mean? Just God? I don't. Like, what? Okay, that's bad writing. <laughs> I, I think that's a bit bad writing. Like, no, it's not bad writing. It's what people would do. But like, why does... Why? Why is that the answer? Why is that the answer? I don't, but the physical parameters governing these of life are utterly unforgiving. Take liquid water, six water, can exist only within a narrow range of temperatures. Yep. Viewing the universe as a whole, this becomes even more apparent. If the parameters of the Big Bang had been different, even in the abilities, we would have no heavy elements and thus no life. Uh, yep. Isn't this clear evidence for intelligent design? Oh, intelligent design. Yeah. So, so you talk about the intelligent design god thing. Okay. I don't know enough about the Big Bang to comment, but you're wrong about the environment of Earth. The Earth gave birth to life, but life also changed the Earth. The current environment nor planet is the rise of interaction between the two. The simulation has not shake the of life and observe how the Earth would have evolved without it. Just the simulation to the coarse grain, so uh, don't waste too much time in computation. What are we looking at? Earth without life? This is what the surface of the planet would look like now. But there are oceans. There are no oceans, no rivers either. Oh, but where are the oceans? No oceans, no rivers, no... Entire surface dry, is saying that li without life, liquid water would not exist. Reality would probably be even more shocking. Remember, this is only cost simulation. But do you think life is nothing but a fragile, thin, soft shell clinging to the surface of this planet? Isn't it? Only if you neglect the power of time. If a colony of ants continue to move clots the size of grains of rice, they could remove all the mount tie in a billion years. That is true. Like, life is action. Life is, life is action in a scientific sense. So, yeah. So, let's give it, yeah. I will skip through it a bit here. I actually am getting really tired. I'm very sorry. Then how did the oceans disappear? We'd have to examine the records. Uh, however, I can give you an extra idea. This plans and rules and I'll have at the rules and present copies of the atmosphere. For life, the atmosphere would be very different. Yeah, it's possible that such an atmosphere would not be able to shield the surface. Oh, that's cool. Wow. That's cool. Man, holy shit. What an awesome thing. Soon greenhouse effects. Okay. I like that. What about the universe? We was Similar mathematical model to simulate the entire universe. Then I check the option for life at the beginning. What would the resulting universe look like? What an awesomely phrased question. I would love to know. 
It would look the same when I talked about the effects of life on the environment. I was limited to Earth, but if we talk about the universe, life is exceedingly rare and its impact on the evolution of the universe can be ignored. Are you sure, mate? From her mother's secret documents, she knew that life was not so rare in the universe. In fact, the universe was downright crowded. Oh, interesting. How much has the universe been changed by life? Wave of terror threatened. Yeah, wow, it's awesome. Wow, it's cosmic horror again. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, we've got cultural revolution. I will skip through it and see if there's something new. Okay, no, I don't think so. But the wife turning him out is so bad. Very fun. Something about a family member which wasn't just science that had become unpredictable. Mass. Some scientists de deaths may not be with their own hand. Yeah, they sure as hell are not the weird alien girls doing them. It ideologies are nasty. Some will become rabid supporters, some victims, and many will be too scared to even tell what's happening. Exactly this. Thank you. Exactly this. It's also what I address in my story, whatever. Just to look at the trend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's arguably something, yeah. But I'm not going to go into modern... Like, I... I it will just derail the channel. I wouldn't... I, I try my best to get away from politics. You, you'd realize right now probably already that I fail spectacularly currently, but... You being against communism was so fucking funny, pretending like it's all hated murders, as if capitalism isn't a thousand times worse. Um, it is, in its extreme, yes, it is all hate and murders, if it's pure. Like, in China, I guess it's buffered by capitalism, by the way, it is. Um, also, like, capitalism is also... It's so funny, why always this capitalism? Like, why can't you just say communism is bad? Can also see capitalism is bad. It is <laughs> like it's it's just slower killing people. <laughs> it's so I know it's bad to say. Like, yeah, yeah. Like capitalism doesn't tend to starve and massacre people. Yeah, and I I agree that it does tend like it can do that. Capitalism can do that as well. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think Nahoy Na uh, uh, did this before, uh, 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 told me this before. Yes, that's true. Churchill murdered uh, millions of, you know, uh, just bonds killed millions of people around the world during the Cold War in an anti communist effort. But that is a war. That is weird. That is a war. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Like, if it's a war, it doesn't matter what the ideologies are. Both sides are probably a war. You know? Like,. That's not an argument. It's in a war. The Cold War was a war. That's why it's called a war, um, in my opinion. So um, it is not isolated. Church, like if this is right, I don't know this. Like I don't know this. But but reading from this, I would, from my frame of view, again my biased frame of view, I would say, um, it's a war. It's a war, and they are trying to eradicate something that they think. And again, I don't know if it was like this, but from what I heard is that uh, 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 communism was something the West was very afraid of, and they tried to eradicate it, and they tried to fight it. And um, they were prepared to make sacrifices for that. Exactly the same as the communists were prepared to make sacrifices to fight the West, by the way. So, like, I don't get that argument. Um, it's a war. Like, everyone's ending people in war, which is why it's atrocious. I, I don't know. Uh, Soviets invaded Afghanistan and Finland. Yeah, they did. Capitalist countries like to hide the dark past too, be more... I don't get that. When did I say capitalists didn't do that? What? Why is everyone assuming I'm a capitalist educator? Like, what the fuck, mates? Like, I, I don't know why. How do you jump to the conclusion? Why? Just because I say something is bad isn't that I like the other thing. It's a false dichotomy, by the way. And so if you ever arguing and want to get into arguments, this, these, these, like, and I don't fault you for that. It's an easy leap to make, but it's a false dichotomy. Just because I don't dislike something doesn't li mean I like something else. Like, like, of course, capitalism, like capitalism, holy shit, it's so dark. Like, have you read Road to Wigan Pier? There were people who lived on a dollar a week and they fucking starved with 27 because shit faces made them shovel coal and they had to go six kilometers into the fucking mines to get a dollar to to not starve immediately and people didn't live past whatever and they were all like like on the ground scrubbing shit out of the, the fucking pavement 
And Jesus, fuck, of course capitalism can turn horrible. Like, why is everyone saying, like, it can't? Like, I never said that. Why? Why do you assume I think that? It's so weird. It's so weird. I'm so sorry. You have to explain that one day why you think that. Just realize we're watching this race. The first thing said in the show is the chanting of root out the box. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's called a struggle session. Uh, what is, I don't know the term, I'm sorry. A review, uh, they show off the x ray the diamond lights as a synchrotron. It's used for a bunch of stuff, nobody X-ray crystallography. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I, I answered here, it's, I, I also think it's not particle physics like we saw in the show. Um, oops. The opening of the show portrays the Cultural Revolution. Yeah, we had that. Uh, and then it spread into the Communist Party with... Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I would skip through it because we had Cultural Revolution a lot. Isn't the so-called free West also getting much like the Cultural Revolution dystopia? Yep, it is. Yep, it is. Your news and media investigate wars overseas and make people fight over petty issues, divide people and make them fight for their issues while ignoring the real problems. Yeah, agreed. Stanley, completely agreed. 100,000% agreed. But I think we had a comment. After watching the series, I like interest watching all the dumb shit on the internet and want to focus on real stuff that push our technology. Yeah, but, but I think I answered that here as well. Like... I get why people watch cats on the internet or dumb shit. Like, you have to let your mind rest from all the complexity of the world. I get it. I do it as well. Like, I've I've watched so much shit on the internet and I'm proud on it. Holy fuck, yeah. I love the series and I already love the ram rambling in the beginning. Got the whole part of the series without even knowing. Like, oh, really? Did I? I can't wait. Seven is uh, subscribe. Okay. So, ready to be uh, three hours? Yeah. I mean, episode three is also one and a half hours. Um... I don't know what's more important, but I do like cosmology a lot more. Yeah, I also love cosmology. I also am very bad at it, I think. Have you heard of the Fermi Paradox? <laughs> yeah. I, I will read the books, don't worry. <laughs> I will. Uh, many you talk uh, too much uh, nonsense to watch before giving like, the common assumption. You why pause so much given unnecessary lectures. Um, uh, you're free to go. So, yeah. So everybody already did. Maybe change the title to Blood Lecture. Uh, hmm. That's actually a good suggestion. But I don't think it's a lecture, because in a lecture I assume I know most of the stuff. Because I also talk in the reactions about stuff that I, um, yeah, that, that I, um... I will consider it. I don't think I... Oh god, oh god, ah oh no, I don't want to caps lock you. Oh god, everyone saw me caps locking him. I should slay, let, it, let it be like this. Oh, uh, oops. Uh, I, I should it. I, I, sh I should let it be in capsule, but I'm not. I'm not an asshole. Sometimes I am, but. Uh. Thanks. I will consider it. I mean, I you saw me consider it. <laughs> um, I wouldn't call it a lecture. That would be like. I would I would say calling it these reactions a lecture would be a, a, a um, what do you say would we would be dragging down the name of a lecture like this is like I'm not giving lectures here um, like I for me a lecture is something very well thought out and very dense and perhaps some parts of the reactions are but I don't consider them lectures like like. I think he meant that as a as perhaps you meant that as a um, as a negative thing uh, being doing a lecture. Um, I also never understand why people tell me you just watch it. Like why can't I think about stuff? I get it's not for everyone, but that's why I say it in the beginning. I I told you in episode one that's how it would. I pause a lot and I talk, and I mean that's on your own if you don't. If you don't watch the intros, there is a theory that says that if God exists in order for him to communicate with humans of any era, place or cultural background, he would have had to use a universal language. And so he thought uh, that uh, uh, mathematics is the universal language. So this means that we, the way we learn about our planet, our universe, is God communicating with us because, for example, mathematic formulas or something. Yes, if it is. Oh, and greetings to, uh, yeah, uh, liebe Grüße zu Schweiz auch, auch dir, liebe Grüße. Um, yeah, greetings to Switzerland. Um, it is, it, it would be the, um, the science god I was talking about, and it's a bad name, I hope you understand what I mean. Like, the one that created, like, literally pushed a button in the lab and the universe is there. And, yeah, that, that, that entity might have hidden 
hidden that then. I wouldn't consider it god though. Like I just don't consider that a god. I just consider it um a powerful being. Like a, a being with power beyond imagination, but not God. But yeah. Yeah, so but I like the idea of like yeah, perhaps someone thought it up. Perhaps someone thought it up. That might be. I don't consider that thing God, but might be. Like that's for me not the question, do you believe in God? Like if I if if the answer would be if someone told me, well there is God, because there was an entity who pushed a button in the lab and now our universe exists and he planned everything. I was like, yeah, it's not God for me. Sorry, it's not God. If you really want more, yeah, the good, the book. Yeah, I will, I will do the book. I will do good. Very educational. Yeah, I've heard it's like a lecture. <laughs> Sorry. It's like, yeah, I don't take uh, negative uh, comments that badly. Like, uh, I am sad about them, but uh, I'm very... Um, um, I always try to see the best in them. So, isn't it technically a four-body problem? It is. I talk about it in episode one three, and it was everything. I think, yeah, that was everything. So, I'm sorry for this long reaction. I hope anyone even watched this. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here. You're awesome, you're an awesome person. <laughs> and if you are not here anymore, you won't see me say you are still an awesome person. So, anyway, I will just upload this unedited. Uh, I hope you have some fun with it, and uh, I I will see you tomorrow in the live premiere of episode one three. If you watch this now, so have a great day, have a good time, bye.